Test, test. All right, that's a whole lot better. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day four, the very last day of the 2024 USA PL High School National Championship here in Baton Rouge, North Carolina. We already have our action started for day four on all three platforms. So we are going to be keeping you updated as best we can for all of the action. Uh, myself and Adriana are going to be uh, we have all three platforms viewed at once, so we might be bouncing around between each one, um, talking about different things regarding the uh, the power lifts, meet strategies, different uh, mindsets, and things like that. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to all of the folks that have made this meet possible. I want to start off with Travis Warner and Cajun Prep Powerlifting Team for being our host uh, for 2024 High School National Championship. We also want to give a quick shout out to our presenting sponsors, SBD and A7. I want to give some uh, recognition to our media team today, uh, Palmetto State Barbell Productions, owner and proprietor Marshall Powell, photographers Strength Through, Cin uh, Strength Through Cinema, Stellar Shots, Jake and Casey. And folks, we're ready to rock. Bar is loaded on all three platforms. Quick introduction, my name is Nick Stevens, AKA Ganondorf on the track. USAPL coach, commentator, has referee. been has been competitor, minted, newly minted referee, and I'm joined by the one and the only. Adriana Davis. Um, I'm a referee, commentator, competitor, and I'm gonna see some action here on day four of the biggest high school nationals in USAPL history. That's right, and today we're looking at the, var uh, we have a bunch of equipped lifting going on today. Uh, the equipped varsity lads from the uh, 100 kilo class and the um, 100 kilos, 110 kilos, 125 and 140, 140 plus. The equipped varsity females, 82 and a half kilos, 90, 100, 100 plus. And raw varsity female, 82, 90, 100 and 100 plus. Folks, we're joined by another lad on the panel today. Not only do we have myself and Adriana, but we're joined by another national level referee, coach, and jack of all trades, especially at this meet. Introduce yourself a little bit. Hey guys, my name is Kevin Serrano. I am coaching, handling, commentating, refing next week at CNS, directing to me later this month. You know, just trying to so many hats as they do. Yeah, outside. too many hats. It's kind of hard not to do when you're in powerlifting. There's, it's so easy to find yourself in different positions. And that's one of the things here with the sport, right? There's so many ways you can get involved, right? Not only as an athlete. Um, again, like we mentioned, this, the barrier to entry to this sport is so easy. It's also very, uh, it, it really means a lot to meet the directors, to the community. If you can spot and load it in me, get certified as a referee, and really do whatever you can to give back to the sport. Absolutely. And folks, let us take you down to the action on the ground. Here's Jamie Patterson coming up to platform one with an opener of 275 pounds, representing Falls County Elite Powerlifting. Alexis Joachim, or Joachim, uh, representing Elk Mound High School Powerlifting. She's going to open with 251 pounds. And on platform three, Tiffany Hensley with a 120 kilogram opener representing Whitehall Powerlifting. And as we get into the beginning of the squat, let's go ahead and talk some about the rules of performance as well as some of the things we want to watch out for um, on the spectator side as, um, as well as on the handling side. Uh, so first up, Kevin, tell us a little about the commands of the squat. So in the squat, you have two commands. You have the squat and rack command. When you approach the bar, once the bar is called loaded by the referee, you will have 60 seconds to walk out the bar, wa walk it out, set your stance, lock your knees, and stand fully erect. Once you do that, you're gonna receive a squat command from the chief referee in which you can then squat, recover, stand up fully with the weight, and then once you're held motionless at the top, you're gonna receive a rack command in which you can then replace the bar with the help of the spotters back into the rack. And very so it's, cool. very, it's very important for you to be able to, for you to listen to those two commands as 
failure to obey any command, whether you jump a command, whether you're just getting too excited, getting too hype after a lift and rack it too early, that disqualifies the lift and therefore will not count to your total. Now you mentioned uh, not being a good lift. What exactly is a good lift in so, powerlifting? So if you're looking at the live stream and you see the screen on the left-hand side by our left-hand referee, you're gonna see a three, uh, three lights populate as soon as the lift is over. A red means uh, either one of the referees gave it a no lift, meaning that that lift will not count or in, in their view, or you see a white light in which that is a good lift. And so it's a majority rules here in powerlifting, so you need at least two white lights in order for that to be a good lift. As we just saw on platform one, we saw three white lights, so that is a good lift. And now, Adriana, what constitutes a, a good lift? Uh, like, what are the, aside from observing the commands, what are like maybe two or three other things that our squatters want to watch out for that we might see a lot of today? Sure. So the most common infraction that you're going to see is a red card. And that is going to be when you're looking at the screen and you see a red light pop up. And you can actually see the color cards below. And we're going to explain a little what those mean. So if you get a red card, that's the most common infraction in the squat. And that's going to mean that you didn't hit depth. So depth is going to happen when the your hip joint at the hip crease breaks parallel with the top surface of the knee. So not just meeting parallel, not a couple inches above, breaking parallel. Um, so that's going to be the most common infraction and honestly the most nerve-wracking infraction for these lifters. Um, it's, it's very mental to try to reach down and hit depth. And then the other two colors, the blue card is going to give you either downward motion or a soft lockout. Um, so that's typically going to be soft knees. Um, the referees are looking for your knees to be relatively straight, uh, just locked out. And a uh, yellow card is going to kind of be everything else. So that could be jumping a command. That could be take, losing your balance, taking a step forward or backwards. That could be just missing the lift outright on strength. And yeah, that's kind of the things that as a referee, you're looking for in the squat. Awesome, awesome. And now, so the squat is the first lift of the day. Um, and kind of just a rundown of how today is going to go. Every lifter um, is going to squat, bench, and deadlift in a certain order. All of our lifters are organized into what's called flights. Uh, and so each of our lifters uh, within their flights by ascending weight order will take their opening attempts. Uh, we'll go down the list there, and then we'll go back to the top of the order. Second attempts, back to the top. Third attempts, and the same is for bench and deadlift. One good thing to note when we talk about the bar in ascending order is when you're looking at the live stream and you're looking at, if you're following a p particular lifter, you, the lifter that is, the, the order of lifting during openers might reshuffle for seconds and thirds, depending on what these lifters and coaches decide to do for their seconds and third attempts. For example, if we have a lifter opening up at, let's say, 100 pounds, and we have a second lifter going to 105 pounds, the lifter going at the lighter weight will go first. However, if they select a higher second attempt than the lifter going after them, let's say the second lifter might have missed their opener and has to retake, but the first lifter goes up to 110 pounds, in that new order for their second attempts, that new lifter will go first with that, hev will go later with that heavier weight. So the bar is always going in ascending order. It's important to note too, as a, as a lifter in this meet, there, I mean, there's a million things you want to focus on aside from the, aside from observing the referee's commands, um, and making sure that you have all of your technique down on the day. Super important to note the importance of having a good handler and having a good coach there to kind of keep you on track with the timing and everything so you only have to focus on lifting to the best of your ability. Here's Crystal Martinez coming to platform one representing our equipped varsity ladies 100 kilo weight class with a very clean TSS t-shirt there representing Texas Strength Systems. Yeah, and she's opening with a very big squat, 215 kilos. 473 pounds, folks. These are some strong ladies. And currently, she's forecasted well ahead in the 100 kilo division. So hopefully if she... Oh. Little sticky there. 
Okay, she's That's gonna be a I didn't want to enact the curse on her, so I was going to say that she is forecasted well ahead in the 100 kilo division. So hopefully, if she is able to make a lift in each discipline, she should likely walk away with the championship. <gasps> oh no, oh. Chloe Moore. Oh goodness gracious, she's not having it. Oh no, we can see the emotion there. She did miss her opener, and unfortunately, after she did miss her second attempt. And Adrian, can you tell us a little bit about what kind of position that puts her in, missing those first two attempts? Sure, I mean, her back is really gonna be against the wall here. She's obviously going to repeat that weight. Um, you would have an option of going up, but if you fail on strength, unless it was some sort of weird missed groove, typically you are going to repeat that weight. So now she's going to risk disqualif being disqualified from the competition. Um, and we would use a term called bombing out. So a bomb out or being disqualified is when you are not able to post a lift in at least one of the disciplines. So you have got to, in order to post up a total and be um, in contention for placing or even just to post a total in the competition, you've got to hit at least one lift in each discipline. And now we've seen some insane miracles across this weekend. We've seen people really dig deep and find a way to either achieve that depth they were looking for, achieve that strength they were looking for. And so we're hoping she's able to come back for that third attempt, stronger, better mindset, and get on the board. Here's Ingrid Holm on three. 115 kilos, 253 pounds. Very smooth there. Kayla gets three whites on platform one. Right. Addison Newman on platform two. She's going to take 214 pounds. And we are already well into second attempts on all three platforms. And coming up next on two is Morgan Iverson. Now, same deal over on platform three. Morgan on two missed that opener at 242 pounds, is going to come back and try and attempt it again. Unsure, uh, I, I, honestly, I missed completely <laughs> uh, what that opener was, although I imagine this attempt will give us a little bit more of an inclination uh, as to what that might be. Here she goes, no wrist straps, no knee sleeves. Oh, the power of youth to have no knee sleeves on squat. Here we go, Morgan. Dip looks good. Okay, it looked clean to me. We're gonna I wait wonder to if it was depth. Say. On lights? the board. Another situation over here on platform one with Jamie Patterson. Again, missing her opener, retaking the same weight at 125 kilos. And now we see Jamie Patterson kind of waddle up to the platform there uh, to take 275. That's because she's wearing a squat suit and knee wraps in our equipped class. And I wonder if that's going to satisfy depth for our judges. Certainly easy weight for her. No, good good lift. Two to one, good lift. All right there. So kind of what we were alluding to earlier, we uh, well, she's wearing a squat suit and knee wraps. Uh, so that would put her into the equipped division. Uh, comparative difference to raw power lifting. You, uh, raw power lifters use a normal singlet. It's kind of a nylon poly kind of blend. Very stretchy, very forgiving. Um, stark contrast to a squat suit. Uh, made of almost hard canvas fabric, very unforgiving, non-stretchable. And so whenever you're on the platform, you almost have to squat against the suit. Um, and therein provides not necessarily a performance advantage, but does increase the capacity with which you, uh, or capacity of weight that you can put on your body. And important to note too, everybody, not everybody in the equipped division has to wear a squat suit or has to wear knee sleeves. Um, they could even come out completely raw. They could wear, or knee wraps, excuse me. They can come out wearing knee sleeves. Um, a normal squat suit, they might be wearing a bench shirt. Who knows? They might need a deadlift suit. Who knows? But for some reason or another, um, they will be lumped into the equipped class. And Allison, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, on platform three, um, that was a good lift from Tegan. She is going to be in a bit of a battle for third place in the 100 kilo division, so keep an eye on that. Allison Taze 
little bit shaky. Was able to keep her balance after shifting a little bit left. Come on, judges. And that's going to be a no lift. So we saw blue lights there. Adrian, what do you think happened there? So I think what happened there is the judges um, probably thought that her knees were not, not, not completely locked out, um, either at the start or end of the lift. I think I saw the end of the lift there a little bit. Um, and that's why all the judges gave a no lift. And it's really a shame when these lifters, they have the, they clearly have the strength to do a lift. They have the capacity, they complete it, but then they get called on some sort of technical issue like that. But that's the name of the game. I mean, we've got to keep the standards fair across the board, and that's going to keep it a level playing field for all of these lifters. That's right. Um, and one thing that we see, especially at national meets, that's kind of uncommon uh, in many local, state, regional level meets, we have a jury uh, on the stand today. Kevin, tell us a little bit about what a jury is and what their purpose, or who they are and what their purpose is. So our jury is made up of representatives of uh, basically international referees. And so these are very high ranking uh, officials who are essentially a second set of eyes on the platform. Let's say a lifter gets a call that they're not necessarily in agreement with, their coach sees something that uh, the referees might have missed or might have called that might have not been uh, favorable for the athlete. So they could c go and contest the jury. They're basically like a judge, right? You can take it uh, to court essentially, and then they can review it and see if they can, might overturn a call. Let's say, let's say for example, a lifter gets a two to one no lift on the side for depth. The coach can go and then approach the jury and contest the lift to try to see if they can overturn that lift. If the jury believes that that lifter did achieve depth, then they, we could start a process of overturning a lift and give it, giving it to the lifter. That's right. And uh, it's important to note too, I mean, there's no consequence to the lifter or the handler for going to the jury. Um, I mean, you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to annoy them with each attempt because uh, they do have three platforms and many, many lifters to watch over. Um, but if you're unsure about a certain lift, go to the jury. They're there for that exact reason. Um, it is completely free unless, unless it is a three white light lift for someone else or a three red light lift. That is going to be a crisp Andrew Jackson. A nice $20 slapped on the table for the jury. Up next on three, Carly Schroeder, kind I'll of following along with the trend here of the meet, missed that opener at 145, going up to 142. What's the mindset there, Kevin? Yeah, so she jumped uh, seven and a half kilos from her opener to second. Uh, clearly not a strength issue, just uh, I think it might have been depth. We'll see how this second moves. Okay. Clean. The red lights? lights? Yep. And it could have been um, not just depth, but it could have been some other sort of technical issue, like perhaps jumping a command. And if she made her opener look easy, it's a little bit dicey to miss your opener and then go up anyways. But if you know that you've got it in the tank, then you can have that conversation with your lifter and perhaps go up to your play on second. Um, or somewhere in between. Again, as a lifter, you really want to convince your coach that you're capable of being able to up your uh, opener to your second attempt. Even after missing your opener, you really have to make it convincing to them that you have it in you. Because it is a, it is a very risky approach, especially at the national championship. But when you're competing with uh, for placings, for podiums, you really want to give it your all. Samantha Davis on three, facing the same situation, and she's on the board. I think that was a two to one call. And Samantha, I mean, that was critical for her to come back and get that second attempt. And she did go up 10 kilos. Um, same situation as Charlie there. And Samantha, She's currently projected first, no? Yeah, Samantha currently projected first in the 100 kilo class. So as Kevin said, when you're in that sort of battle, it's ever the more important to get on the board. I mean, you don't want to be forecast first or within the top three at the beginning of the meet, and then you end up bombing out. Over on platform one, we have Cambria attempting 523 pounds. Cambria projected well ahead in the 100 plus kilo class. This is a big squat for her. Over 500 pounds from a high schooler. Let's see it. Oh, she's Marvelous. able to fight through that sticking point. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Pop over to platform three. Here's Chloe Moore gonna reach a 107 and a half one more time. Can she dig it out? Let's go, Chloe. <gasps> hold it. That might have given it to her. Come on, judges. Oh, that's gonna be nothing. Oh, it's gonna be a no lift on depth across the board. She can't now, approach the jury. 
She can. She is able to, uh, as long as she's got that Chris 20. Now, one thing uh, I want to notice here about Chloe, it looked like she had kind of a hard time getting those knee sleeves on earlier today, so she might have had to switch those out. Mm -hmm. um, it could be due to uh, any number of factors there, um, but I, I can only imagine that had an effect. Yeah. Hopefully she um, she does have the option to come back out for her um, bench and deadlift. I, I would recommend that to try to finish off the day strong. I mean, you paid for registration, you paid to travel here, and you still would get that experience on the national stage, even if you're not going to register a total. Exactly right. Now here's Leah Warner. Oh, what a grind on three for Kiera Nickel. Ooh. Leah Warner on platform two, coached by Nathaniel Litz Tower. Leah Warner, I believe last year's high school national champion for the 82 and a half kilos. Oh, wow. And see if she can fight. That's 137 and a half. That is two white lights. She's on the board. Yeah, Again, and we Leah currently projected first in the 82 and a half kilo class. Gonna be looking to make that double championship. And it's not necessarily a runaway race either. I mean, the spread is, I mean, within 10 to 20 kilos, which mm -hmm. can be easily made up across the bench and the deadlift. Like you were saying earlier, folks may bomb out, folks may miss attempts, um, and that could really change the game. Again, yeah. we have Rhea Johnson on platform two, who is also with her back against the wall after missing her opener electing to retake the same weight for her second attempt. Yeah, sort of an interesting situation there. Both Leah and Rhea projected one and two in the 82 and a half, and they both missed their opener. Trying to get on the board here. Can Rhea do it? Oh my gosh, and it's tough. She locks it out. See what the judges say. I think it's clean. Two, two to, to one. one. Good She's list. She's on the board. That's a little bit of a sigh of relief there, because like you were talking about, we've seen with some of our other lifters who had missed their opener and their second attempts, getting that sigh of relief, knowing you're on the board and you can move on comfortably into the bench and the deadlift just takes away so much added stress. Yes, and that's kind of part of the importance of putting in an opener that you know you're gonna hit. I mean, you have to consider the factors of traveling, if you had to cut into the class, big fight on platform three. Is she wearing a belt? I don't know. I can't tell if she was. Yeah, she she okay, <laughs> I was about to say, completely raw, no knee sleeves, no wrist straps, no belt. That'd be very impressive. I mean, for impressive either way, she went three for three. And we are now on our third attempt squats on all three platforms. Jamie Patterson's coming up on platform one. Missing that opener, getting it back on the second going up seven and a half kilos representing Falls County Elite. This is going to be 292 pounds. Oh my goodness, what that a is grinder. a grind and a half. I didn't see any downward motion there. We saw some uh, tipping side to side. That's a good lift, wow. Kendall Vett on platform two. Missing her second attempt squat, going up two and a half kilos and securing 95 kilos. Allison Tays on one, gonna retake 152 and a half. That's 336 pounds up next on platform three. Abby Fonsenot, 130 kilos. Looking to go three for three on squats. Oh, and that's a good grab there, there by there, the yeah. spotters and loaders. Real quick point of recognition here. We want to give a major, major shout out to the spotters and loaders for this meet. Folks, these lads have been on the platform for the past four days straight. I mean, these guys are putting in more work than most power lifters I know at the top levels. I mean, if you've ever spotted and loaded a meet before, it is extremely difficult. Uh, it's taxing, it's tiring. You've got to be on the ball for each and every lifter. And it's exhausting. It's exhausting for sure. but the meet would not run without them, so we want to give them their flowers, as well as all of our cat, uh, national referees on the platform as well. Oh, big fight on platform three from Gracie. Allison Tays finds depth all too slowly, but able to spring up out of the bottom. I think that's a good lift, and it is. Three whites. 
Another solid grind, platform two, Iris Harlow. That's gonna be a no lift on death, unfortunately, but she'll come away with her uh, first and second attempt squat. Tegan Becker on platform three, going up seven and a half kilos. This is the big 300 pound mark. She's in the fight for podium position in her class. See if she can add these extra seven and a half kilos. And she can, three white lights. Stormy Watson able to pick up another 10 kilos, three white light lift on platform one. Morgan Iverson on two. Ooh, good grab there by the spotters. Looks like bars loaded on platforms one and two. Leah Sanchez is going to come up to 165 kilos, 363 pounds. Addison on platform two, 264 pounds, goes down nice and easy. She'll come away uh, one of the only lifters in this flight at the moment. Uh, to come away three for three on squat. Yeah, and I mean, that's the importance of making lifts there. If you're going three for three in the squat, you're going to be adding the most kilos that you can on the day towards your total. If you end up with just your opener, then yes, potentially you could say you had the capability for seven and a half, ten kilos more. But that's not what's on the board. That's the, that the importance of making lifts is so crucial to building towards your total. And you kind of alluded to it just a little bit, but when you're building your total here, let's say you've hit some big numbers in prep, right? What if you just wake up feeling absolutely crummy? Let's say uh, you didn't get to eat well last night. Let's say you had to travel, like Kevin said. Uh, some other factors include uh, cutting for weight, cutting for weight class, things like that. You've got to adjust. That is going, yeah, absolutely. You have to adjust for whatever you are capable of on the day. That is going to be the name of the game for powerlifting is doing the best that you can on the day. Yeah, and it's very difficult to adjust, especially when you've got these goals and training that you're aiming for. But, I mean, you have to look at it from the perspective. And that's where Handler comes in to provide some objective feedback to the lifter, say, hey, this isn't gonna be on there on the day. There's no use of overreaching because that's gonna end up in the lower total anyways. Let's, let's adjust, let's bump down our um, projected third attempts by two and a half, five kilos, and we can go from there. Again, it may be nice to wanna chase those milestone numbers, those really landmark numbers that you might have missed in training or you wanna just be able to squat over uh, 500 pounds, 300 pounds, whatever the case may be, but really you have to take what's there on the day. Big fight on platform two for Trinity. Had an interesting um, attempt selection there. So I believe her opener moved a little hard and that's why she only jumped two and a half kilos. And then she ended up jumping seven and a half kilos. And I was a bit worried there when she hit the sticking point, but she was able to fight through it. Big 500 pound squat on platform, one. On platform one, but Good catch by the that's spotters. a big number. That's 500 pounds. Yeah, and that was a big jump she took from her opener. Wow. We're going up to 507 pounds for Kyle Lehman. Crystal, Mar uh, Cr Crystal Martinez, apologize, representing Kyle Lehman. And that is going to be a good lift for Charlie. Up next is Samantha Davis with 172 and a half kilos. She's going to round out our first flight of power lifters on platform three. We're gonna go into flight two. And Samantha Davis on platform three. Missed her opener, came back, jumped 10 kilos anyway, so it's almost like she negated that missed opener. Now taking another 10 kilos to 172.5. Really in a good spot here where she's projected well ahead in the 100 kilo class. And of course, the projected is a tool that we use to kind of show some indication of the storylines, show who's in contention for going for the top placings, but they're not gonna tell the whole story. That's right, and one thing to, oh, I mean, folks, if you're watching at home, 
If you want to keep up to date with all the live action going on the platforms, including attempt changes, um, good or bad lifts and the reasons why, uh, lifter order, forecasted placings, how that's going to change, stuff like that, do go and check out liftingcast.com. Scroll down to day four of the high school and national championship for the United States Powerlifting Association. And Cambria, platform one, 534 pounds. Let's see if she can do it. And she logs it out. What do the judges say? That's going to be Two a to one good lift. lift. And she celebrates as she should. She is projected ahead in that 100 plus kilo weight class. And starting off strong, she went three for three on the day, hitting a big, big 534 pound squat. That's insane. 534 pound squat from a high schooler. I'm excited to see Nutty. how the rest of her day goes. And not only that, but 500 pounds is almost unheard of. Um, I mean, not to bring gender or a sex into this, but most ladies, especially that way, like, they're not like 100, sorry, words. 500 pounds is a lot. Yes. Yeah. Objectively, for any, I mean, for any anybody. power lifter, 400 really. 300 pounds is a lot. For 300 any. pounds is a lot. <laughs> I mean, let's be real. And again, you put 300 pounds on your back and you're not used to it, it hurts. And again, let's not forget the fact that these are high schoolers. Yes, these kids are between the ages of uh, 13 and 17, 18. 18. Yep. Now here's Samantha Joe Walden on platform three. I am a, I'm such a massive fan of those socks. Oh my goodness, the bow on the socks there. Replacing the knee sleeves? Okay. Respect. Respect. That's 200 and 37 pounds and a good lift. She's on the board. Leah Warner, platform two. Our lifter that is in the battle for the 82 and a half kilo class, electing to jump five kilos. In these battles, every kilo is gonna matter. That's why it's so important to have a good handler, to know what you're capable of. And I think oh my handler goodness. has done it. That looked like the perfect call. Oh, Nate Latower's been here before. Two to one, good lift. All right, here's Kalani Higa on platform two, 314 pounds. If I'm not mistaken, is that the Higa monster in the background in her handling corner? One of I think it is. the greatest equipped power lifters of all time. That's one of the strongest high fives I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she clearly showed it through her squats. Oh my goodness. Ending the day with the three, 314 squat. I don't want to, uh, now that their hero last name is Higa as well, I obviously don't want to assume that, you know, daughter might be a cousin or whatever, but got to be something in the genes. Rhea Johnson in that 82 and a half kilo battle, missed her opener, had to repeat that, and jumped seven and a half kilos. Now, let's see if she gets this, she could add seven and a half kilos to, towards her total in that fight for the title against Leah Warner. We have a good lift. Un, unthrown, dethrone the reigning national champion. Oh my gosh, and it's a fight for her. Unfortunately, it's no lift, and she walks away one for three in the squats while Leah missed her opener but walked away with her last squat, getting those extra kilos in the tank that's going to matter at the end of the day. And we've got Brendan Taze coming up next, uh, brother of Allison Taze, both equipped lifters. He's going to take 215 kilos. That's 473 pounds. Good run. He's on the board. Carson Harward on platform two in the battle for a podium position in that 82 and a half kilo weight class. We've seen battles all weekend. And she's going to be looking to add five kilos here in the squat. Can she do it? She had to put in the fight, but I think it's going to be good. 
Three white lights, it's a good lift, three for three. And that's gonna be our last lifter for the first flight on platform two. We're gonna go on to our second flight. Uh, Audrey Le Aubrey Lehman's gonna start us off with 80 kilos, 176 pounds. Now folks, Benjamin Ragas on platform one, an opener of 518 pounds. Wow. I'm excited to see how this moves. I am as well. He's in the eclipse, uh, e eclipse, <laughs> equipped class. Uh, varsity boys, 100 kilos. Here we go. Smooth, steady, clean, a touch slow for what we kind of want to see for an opener. Um, ideally, you'd want to see an opener, you know, kind of a good rule of thumb that coaches use is something that you can triple on a bad day. Um, you want it to be something you've already hit, something you know you can hit no matter the circumstance. Um, and who knows, that might have been something that she could have hit on any circumstance. Um, might have, could have been maybe a hair slow for any number of reasons. Maybe this, that's just how she squats. Some people squat a little bit slower than normal. But the importance of having an opener that you know you can hit is super, super important because, like we saw with a few lifters in the previous flight, you could face some, some stiff competition, and I'm not just talking about the lifters, I'm talking about gravity itself, and it may not be so forgiving. Daniel Rodriguez, 523 pounds. Very clean there. Daniel representing Falls County Elite. Very much running for the top spot in the class. All right, he's on the board two to one. Here's Riley on platform two. 115 kilos for the varsity ladies, 100 plus kilo weight class, 253 pounds. And Natasha Cruz getting set up underneath 167 and a half. That is 369. Here we go, Natasha, rocking the black and white A7 singlet. Shout out A7, our presenting sponsor, Demand Greatness. Here's Corbin Odin, oh Lord above. For the lads equipped 110 kilo weight class, this kid's opened up with 545 pounds. Whoa. And he took it to the sky, oh my goodness. That's a beautiful lift for Corbin. And folks, we're only going up from here. We're taking the bar out to 606 pound Whoa. opener for Weston. Dang, come on, bro. Competing in the 110 division. I didn't touch 600 till I was in college. These kids are touching it for their opener and before they hit social studies class. And he's not even the last in the flight. Mm -mm. We're gonna see a bigger squat than this. Mm -hmm. But first, he is going to open up with 606 pounds kind of slated in second place in the 110 kilo class. Good lift for Riley on three. Emma's coming up on two. Here's Weston Bono. 275 kilos. Good night, Moon. Walks it out steadily. Five reds. Good lock of the knees there. Depth looks good. Let's see what the judges say. That was clean. Yeah, that was it clean. Was two, to two to one. Two to one. It was clean. Wow, it wasn't even folks. a depth call, it was a blue card. And folks, we're just gonna keep going up and up and up over on platform one. Anthony John Quillman, 617 pounds. Over on good platform night. Over on platform three, we have Grace with 407 pounds in the 90 kilo division. What? She is lifting raw. Yeah. That's wow. a smooth opener. Smooth opener over 400 pounds. Currently slated first in the 90 kilo class, but Briley's gonna be right on her tail. And again, she, these girls are, are lifting raw, so no supportive equipment, no squat suit, no knee wraps. Abigail Stefanski, 264 goes down nice and easy. Coming up to second attempts on platform three. Laura Elian, Elian is going to retake 100 kilos, representing Troy Athens powerlifting. Now, kind of what we were talking about here, she did miss that opener of 100 kilos. Very safe, very smart decision to try and retake that. 
and Anthony on one. I've never seen 600 pounds move that fast. Wow. Oh my Lord Three above. Three white lights. That was 617 pounds. And we That's have more another, another. No, go ahead. We have another lifter opening up at the same weight. Holy. I was going to say 617. That's more than I think close to 98, 99% of the powerlifting population can even deadlift. <laughs> yes. And Caleb Bordelon, he's going to be our lifter really slated in first place in the 110 kilo equip class. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin and I are over here just like, yeah, we did 600. <laughs> <laughs> what is your best PR? I'm curious. That's my PR. 617? 218, okay. yep. Nice. And he's squatting it. Yeah, how do you feel For about an that? opener. <laughs> <laughs> now, granted, there's a little bit of a discrepancy in weight there. Kevin, I uh, believe, is a 75 kilo lifter? Yeah. All right. And Caleb, wow. a little wow. bit heavier at 110, but moves it so much faster. Oh, my God. Three wide Three lights. Three whites. That's going to take us to the top of the order there. I can only imagine what we're going to go up to for seconds and shoot thirds. That's going to be a party on platform one. Alyssa Bartholi. Three white lights. She's on the board there. Wearing a limitless singlet, one of our sponsors for today. Faith Bonds on platform three. Taking 275 pounds for the ladies' 90 kilogram raw weight class. That looks a little borderline to me. Now, folks, when we talk about borderline, we're talking about really parallel um, in terms of uh, top of the knee to the hip crease. However, that was two to one, so I'm going to stop talking. Evelyn on platform two, taking 162.5 kilos for her opening weight. Really trying to lock up a national championship here. In the battle, in the hunt. Ooh. Oh, no. I believe there was a and she knew it too. movement. Dang. I think she felt it. And that was her opener. Now, obviously, I think she's going to repeat that on her second attempt. Over on platform three, we have Daphne Reed taking 132 and a half kilos. And she's she able to stand it. up with it. Good job for her handler letting her know to wait for that rack command. She's on the board. Same type beat over on platform one for Rick Bose. Rick opted to take a 10 kilo jump to 215 pound kilos. I see the vision here. Uh, he did get called on depth for that first one. Whew, but free white lights, not for good this lift. One. I saw Rick compete at a true born meet in January, and he's got a lot of heart on him. He's got a lot of heart. He competed at the Rumble? You know what? I don't know if it was January. I think it might have been another meet. <laughs> I, you might be thinking of the knockout. I, I think it was the knockout, yep. Mm -hmm. Either way, I talked to him, and I talked to his dad, and he's got a lot of heart on him and really looking to have a good meet here at the 2024 what High School National Championship. What a grind on Platform 3. 10 kilos. Give it to her. Woo, come on. That's going to be a no lift. Unfortunately. Here's Garrett, platform one, good depth there. Trying to cook with his second attempt. Ooh, Adriana with her first punt of the weekend. hey -o. Only took four you days to warm up. You have a bad influence. We have Daniel on platform three, taking a 12 and a half kilo jump. And a 20 kilo jump over on platform one. Oh my God, well, huh? 20 kilo jump from Brendan Tays. Now, like we started, uh, like we said at the very beginning, wearing uh, a squat suit and knee wraps does increase the capacity of weight that you're able to lift. Um, it doesn't necessarily make you stronger or weaker. Um, it just lets you lift more weight comparative to the raw category. Along with that, you're able to kind of get away with a little bit bigger jumps because you have to utilize the spring and the elasticity or lack thereof uh, in the suit and in the knee wraps. Brendan Taze, a little bit of a shaky walk out there, finds his way. Slow and steady. Good call with the handler as he gets three white lights. Benjamin on platform one, gonna come out to 237.5, only taking a two and a half kilo jump. That could have indicated that 
his opener is a bit tougher than you expected. Maya gets three white lights representing Nina powerlifting. Up next, we have Chelsea Yang from Elk Mount. Benjamin over on one. Mm, 523 goes down nice and easy. That's going to be a good lift. Chelsea Yang on platform three, 157 and a half kilos. Very safe five kilo jump. That's generally between two and a half to seven and a half, kind of reaching that higher end. Um, those are going to be kind of our uh, low ranges and safe jumps. On platform two, Giselle Safel. 127 and a half kilos, 281 pounds. Natasha Cruz on platform three, coming up to 175 kilos, 385 pounds. Really in the hunt for a podium position and potentially second or first if some of the other eight ladies start to slip up. He just gave me a look, I was worried. Daniel Rodriguez on one, coming out to 245 kilos. We have Abigail <laughs> on platform two, representing Goodrich powerlifting. Ah, oh, unfortunately on platform three, Natasha's going to miss her second attempt at 175. Daniel able to lock out on platform one. Abigail Stephanie Stefanski is gonna need help coming out of the bottom for that one. Seven and a half might have been just a little bit too big of a jump there, but she's going to have to retake that. Here's Briley Batiste on platform three, 190 kilos, 418 pounds, representing the home team, the Cajun Prep powerlifting team. Now, folks, take a look over at platform one. Corbin Odin, five. 184 pounds rocking looks like Jordan ones if I'm not mistaken or or high top dunks can't see from that far away matching the t-shirt a good and on platform three oh, a little bit of a nosebleed there for Corbin oh wow three white light lift we're taking the bar all the way up to 628 pounds for Weston Bono over on platform two, a one. Hey, what's going on? We might have a world record attempt on platform three. Grace Chatelaine, Chatelaine, 429 pounds. This is gonna be a world record attempt in the 90 kilo raw weight class. Likely in the team two division. This is a big squat. 435 This is a big pounds. squat for anybody. Yes. Not to mention Grace, who is in high school, y'all. Yeah, slotted in first. Let's see if she can continue her lead. Can she get it? She locks it out. Good show, Grace. Cameron Hall on one, going up Three five white kilos. Lights. She's on the board, too. Fantastic lifting on platform three. We have Weston taking 628 over on platform one. Ooh, Weston having a little trouble finding depth there. Is not gonna be able to find his way. Spotter's gotta grab it. That's gonna be a no lift. I imagine he'll try and retake that. Try and uh, add a little bit more speed to that ascent. See if he can't get a little more pop out of those knee wraps. And folks, we're on a uh, platform three, we are already on the third attempt. Alyssa on platform two, 157.5. Jump five kilos from our opening attempt. And then move well. Move well. Let's see what the judges say. Three white lights, good lift. We have Lara on platform three, taking 110 kilos. Very nice. 
and that's gonna be a no lift on depth, unfortunately, from at least two of our judges. Spotter's hiding the other one. All right, here's Evelyn Edenburn on platform two. Safe uh, option there, going to retake 165, ki oh, sorry, 162 and a half kilos. I like that call. She is, um, I really like that call too because she is slotted in first place right now. So as long as she makes a lift, then she should have it. Has to put in the fight, but I think it's going to be good. Three white lights, avoids disaster, gets on the board. What a sigh of relief for her. No lift on three for Samantha, followed right behind by Faith Bunce, 132 and a half kilos. That's a sizable jump there. So we went 120 to 125, so five kilos, and then a larger jump from 125 to 132 and a half. Gonna eyes, see how she handles it. Eyes over on platform one, we have Caleb going up to 650 pounds. Sorry? Wow for a second squat. And he is now squatting and they very close <laughs> to my all-time deadlift look PR. That hard. Whether the judge is gonna stay on depth. That's a good lift. Three white lights. Wow. He moved that faster than I moved 650 as a deadlift. Come on, man. Daytona platform two. Big jump here, 12 and a half kilos to 187.5. Oh, and I almost said, oh. Good catch from the spotters there. All right, here's Emily Anderson coming up to platform two, 132 and a half kilos. Another safe uh, option there, looking to retake a missed second. Same for Ben Lazowski on platform one. Let's see if Emily can hit this. Oh, and has oh, to put in a fight. A oh. oh, my goodness. That was so close. Just two and a half kilos too much. And that's a, one of the situations where, unfortunately, she is going to walk away with just her opening attempt. And, I mean, I think she could have, they took a 10 kilo jump to her second. I think she could have had seven and a half. So leaving some kilos on the table there. But hopefully she can come back for bench and turn around, go three for three and bench, three for three and deadlift. Keep that positive momentum going. Aubrey on two, it's a good lift with 97.5, ends the day three for three in the squats. And folks, emotions are definitely running high here at the 2024 USAPL High School National Championship. I mean, these kids have worked for months, some three, four months at a time. They've been working on trying to get to the national level for so, so long. And when things don't quite turn out as planned, it is a little bit of a a little bit of a mind game you have to play with yourself, but just know that it is never over until it is truly over. We still have bench, we still have deadlift. Yeah, if you have a um, a bad, quote unquote bad squat day, you've just gotta leave it behind. You just gotta move on to a exactly. bench. Can't um, harp on it. We have Garrett Cook on platform one. Uh-oh, Garrett's about lights. to cook. Oh no, Garrett Cook already, he already cooked. The meal's already done. Goes three for three on squats. <laughs> Stole my joke. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, Adriana made it first. <laughs> Rick Bowes, platform one. Oh, unfortunately no lift on platform three. Rick Bowes walking out to 222.5 kilos, 490 pounds. Folks, one thing I want to talk about, it's very, very important, especially in powerlifting, to have a short memory. My, my, my dad taught me that very, very early on in my sports days. Having a short-term memory, especially in a sport where your performance only lasts nine total minutes, right? It's important to, I mean, yes, you have to take each lift uh, uh, building off of each other, of course, as you're building that total, but it's important to keep perspective on the lift as an individual lift as well. Uh, taking that lift, taking it for what it is, putting past it, moving on to the next one. We only move forward in powerlifting. Yeah, you, you cannot get in your head about um, previous attempts, thinking, oh, my second attempt moved a little sticky. I'm gonna be 
you know, I that mean, means the third attempt is going to not move. You know, that's never the case, almost always. Here's Brendan Taze, 540 pounds. And he's clean all the way up. What are the judges going to give him? And that, that is a, a good, good lift. lift. Woo. A smooth third on platform three by Chelsea. Platform one's doing pretty solid right now. Yep. Which is interesting because that's most of our equipped lads. So, I mean, kind of conversely, it is more likely that you'll miss uh, a lift in uh, a suit, whether that be a squat suit or a bench shirt, deadlift suit, whatever that may be, um, because it is extremely restrictive, and so your normal ranges of motion are going to be restricted as well. Uh, and so very small, minute changes in those ranges of motion could spell disaster for our lifters. Platform three, Natasha Cruz missed her second attempt at 175, being forced to retake it here, needs these kilos. Trying to stay in the hunt for a potential um, second place spot. She likely has third place locked up, but if she starts to miss too many lifts, then it could be bad for her. Let's see if she can add these seven and a half kilos. I think she might be able to fight through that. Able wow. to lock it out. That was huge. <laughs> three white three whites. Lights. Phenomenal. And Briley, hold up, platform three. Whoa. Briley with the big, big 200 kilos for her last attempt. Over here on platform two, we have Cameron taking a 15 kilo jump after missing her opening attempt, going up five kilos after that. Makes easy work out of 330 pounds. Daniel Rodriguez, platform one, 260 kilos. And on platform three, we've got a world record attempt. So, bit of a battle here between um, Briley as well as Grace. Now, Grace took the world record, team two world record, on her second attempt with 195. Briley looking to up that by five kilos. And I wonder if we'll have an answer from Grace later on. We are going to for her third attempt. Wow! Probably what a tease. Tease. 20 what a kilos. Squat. One of the fastest world records we've seen thus far. We've seen a lot. And we're going to have ourselves a battle in this weight class. Yeah, oh, I mean, we're man. already having a squat battle between Briley and Grace. And it's just going to shape up to be a phenomenal battle for the title as well. We are oh, now man. over 600 pounds over on platform one. We have... Corbin Odin from LB Strength and Fitness taking the bar up to 611 pounds. And Briley is actually coming out there to watch Grace hit 202.5. And she's actually cheering her on. She is cheering on Grace to take back that Team 2 world record. Let's see if Grace can do it. 446 pounds here. Can she get it? Unfortunately, it's just a little too much, and Briley is going to walk away with that Team 2 world record. And that's a big deal. Briley going 3 for 3, while Grace goes 2 for 3. Kind of sets it up for an interesting battle there in the 90 kilo weight class. That's right. And then with that last squat attempt, we're going to finish up the action on squats over on platform 3. We're going to take a 10 minute break while we get set up for the bench press. Ladies and gentlemen, we've, it is uh, 9.04, it is well into breakfast time. Going to get you a nice biscuit, maybe some eggs, some cheese, and we will see you in about 10 minutes. Weston Bono, platform one, retaking 628 pounds. Evelyn, platform two, 172.5 kilos. Let's see if Weston can hit this on his third. Strength, no issue. Got to wait to see on the depth. And I believe the last one was strength as well. 
three. Was it strength? I think he lost that second wow. attempt on strength. Way to come back. And that's the kind of thing that can happen at equip lifting. You miss a lift. You think, whoa, there's no way they're getting that on their third. They come back, make the proper technical adjustments, and they're able to hit it. Yeah, they Phenomenal run to the job there. They got to run to the vet real quick. Got to find the dog in them. Sure. Over here on platform one, we have Anthony John Quillman squatting 677 pounds. Wow. And Anthony. Sorry, you said squatting what? 307 and a half kilos, 677 freedom units. I'm going to ask you to say that one more time for the folks at home because that's just an unreal number. Oh Rep my God, a high school kid. 677 pounds. That's a big boy. Anthony John Quillman, 307 and a half kilos. And this is some even bigger weight. Folks, if the bar ain't bending, you're just pretending. Anthony sure isn't. Let's see what he's got. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. baby. Oh, I'm, I'm, that got me amped. I'm a little bit up now. That was awesome. Look at that. Three white Undeniable. lights. Good show. But that's not our last squat attempt. We have Caleb Bordland going up to 683 pounds. Oh, my Lord. Closing oh my out the flight in a platform one. Had to grab the bar for Daytona on platform one, or platform two, sorry. And we just got finished with the bench press over on that platform, sorry, with the <laughs> squat on that platform while we move on to the bench press. Got a little ahead of myself there. It is 9.06. Uh, we've already got biscuits, egg and cheese on platform three. You guys, y'all need some meat. Get you some bacon, maybe a little bit of sausage, some OJ, and we'll see you in about 10 minutes.
Bar is loaded, coming up to platform two. Addison Newman. Actually, bar is not loaded yet, but we're ready to rock with the action on platform two. We have Abby on platform three, opening us up with 99 pounds. And she's representing the home team, Cajun Prep Powerlifting. And folks, now that we've got two platforms running for the bench press, we're gonna get talking about the rules of performance for the bench press. Now, Kevin, your turn. Let's tell us a little about the commands for the bench press. In the bench, we have three commands, which is arguably the more technical of the lifts. We have the start, press, and rack. Once our chief referee gives you the bars loaded um, issuance, you now have 60 seconds to approach the bar, unrack the bar with the help of, with a, or not, from the head spotter and loader. You then unrack the bar with elbows locked. You have three points of contact. You have your shoulders, your butt, and your feet. Once you're uh, ready to go on bench, you're gonna receive a start command from the chief referee in which you can then lower the bar to your chest. Once the bar is held motionless on the chest, the chief referee will issue a press command, which you can then press the bar fully to lock out. And then once the bar is locked out and held motionless, you will receive a rack command, which then you can replace the bar back into the rack. And we'll toss this layup up to Adriana. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the infractions we might see for the bench press? Sure, so you've got, similar to the squat, all your color cards. The blue card is going to be up and down motion or a soft lockout, um, which is gonna be seen in soft elbows, kind of synonymous to soft knees in the squat. And those two are relatively common, especially once you're getting towards those max attempts. For the yellow card, it's gonna kind of be a catch-all. So there's a lot of things to look for in the bench, which makes it the most complicated of the three. So yellow card can be jumping the commands, as Kevin explained. Um, your butt leaving the bench, your foot lifting off the floor. We gotta keep our feet flat on the floor. And the red card is gonna be not as common in raw lifting, but a little more common in equipped. The red card is gonna be for if the bar is hovering. So you cannot get a press command if the bar does not completely touch your chest. And on platform three, Chloe Moore opening up with 60 kilos. Unfortunately, Chloe did not register a squat. Oh. Unfortunately, the same type of storyline in bench. Now, what I would recommend is when you had a bad squat day, okay? The strength is clearly a little bit lower than you were expecting. I would recommend lowering those openers um, for bench and deadlift. At, le at least until you start warming up. Maybe you're warming up and deadlifts are on um, as compared to maybe your squats were a little lower. But I, just to play it safe, I would recommend um, probably lowering your openers at least two and a half, five kilos. Nothing drastic, but just so you can get on the board. Now, Chloe um, didn't have anything to lose there. She did, unfortunately, bomb out on squat. And hopefully she'd come back and hit that on her second attempt bench. All right, bars loaded on three for Ingrid Holm. This is going to be 62 and a half kilos. That's 137 pounds representing Roseville powerlifting. And Addison on platform two, two to one. That's gonna be a good lift. And that's looks like an easy uh, opener there for Ingrid as well. Welcome back, folks, over on platform one, Savannah Marvin. Her time has come to start off the bench press on platform one, representing Mauston High School. And we see Savannah coming out to platform one. Looks like she's, uh, looks like she's covering her chest there. Arms are crossed there. And that is because she's wearing what's called a bench shirt. 
Now, what the bench shirt does, uh, comparative to wearing a regular T-shirt on the bench press, obviously there's no support with a, a regular T-shirt, cotton T-shirt. Um, but with the bench shirt, that's going to be made of the same material as the squat suit. And so it's going to be very, very unforgiving at those end ranges of motion, right? So what we're going to find a lot is lifters are going to utilize uh, the, the, we call it the pop. Uh, we're going to utilize the pop of the suit off the chest, but then we're going to see some folks have a little bit of a tough time transitioning from the suit to the triceps. Um, and so we might see some lockout issues. It's probably going to be very fast off the chest for our equipped lifters. And it's a little bit more, I don't want to say dangerous, but uh, benching in a bench shirt can be a little bit more risky. Um, like we said earlier with the squat suit, those end ranges of motion are going to be so defined and they're so much more restricted than normal. And so, like we said, any small mishap with that, it's going to end up um, in a mislift or just some sort of mishap happening. And even in training, um, equip can be very difficult. With raw lifting, you can likely train on your own in your garage or just by yourself at the gym. With equip, you can't really do that. You've got to have um, a group of spotters there able to protect you. And that's why we're so thankful for our spotters here today, keeping our lifters safe, working really hard. All right, walking up to platform three, Gracie is going to take 70 kilos, so 154 pounds. Alexis on two, she's gonna take 57 and a half, and Adeline on platform one, going 132 pounds. And Adeline here on platform one is lifting as a guest lifter, meaning she either uh, did not make weight, I believe, competing in the 80, intending to compete in the 82 and a half kilo weight class, or um, some other situation where she cannot post a total, but she's still allowed to lift. Right, that's a little bit different than bombing out. Or actually, quite a bit different than bombing out. So when you bomb out, you are unfortunately not able to post any uh, records or totals or anything like that. Um, as a guest lifter, you absolutely can. I believe the records are, are a little bit skewed, uh, depending on if it's hit, a body you, weight issue. Yeah, I think, I think you, you would be able to hit um, a record. I mean not based on the weight class you miss, but based on that new weight class, and you are able to post a total, but your total will just not count towards um, Any placing. placings or medals, yep. yep. I mean, technically you become first place because you're one of one. <laughs> Allison Taze on platform one. Now we saw there, folks, very big pop off the chest, but as soon as we got to lockout, triceps took over. Got a little bit slower, but that's going to be a good lift. We're moving on to our final bench opener over on platform three, Samantha Davis, opening up with 85 kilos. Crystal Martinez, Crystal Martinez on platform one, opening up with 67 and a half kilos. If you remember, she had a phenomenal squat day only going two for three but hitting 220 kilos on their second attempt it's amazing and i imagine if she gets a lift in each event she should be good for the title but we'll have to see smooth opener by samantha on three yep and crystal secures that opener there three white lights Moving up to the top of the flight for Kiera. 45 kilos locked in, locked and loaded. And Leah Sanchez is coming up to 154.32 pounds, representing the ladies equipped 100 plus kilo weight class. That is going to be, yep, I already said that. <laughs> it's going to be 154 pounds. Morgan Iverson, good opener on two. Kiera Nickel with the power braids. Unfortunately, not able to come away with that attempt. We got two yellow lights and one blue light. 
I want to say it could have been on strength, maybe? I think, I think she jumped the command there. Oh, okay. Jumped the press command. And that's something you can see um, from many lifters. The commands sometimes feel a lot longer in competition, given that you're lifting so close to your max load. And in training, I mean, you don't have another set of eyes giving you that press command. Typically, you have to be really honest with yourself and pause up to one second um, to train for that press. And sometimes some lifters will just opt to touch and go. And again, here in the bench press, the referees are not here out to get you, right? They really want you to succeed, but you still have to lift to the standard. So as specified by the rule book, once the bar is held motionless on the chest for an unspecified amount of time, the chief referee will give you that press command. So it's really up to the responsibility of the lifter to do as best they can to hold the bar motionless on the chest. Bar is loaded for Maria Ro Roberson on platform one. 165 pounds, representing 949 Academy. We have Michaela Koenig on platform two. Good lifts on both one and two, and on platform three, Faith Bailey getting set up with 50 kilos for a second attempt. A little bit slower off the chest. I mean, really there. slow overall. Tough go for a second attempt. What do you think she's going to go for that third there? I think two and a half kilos. Yep, five and then two and a half is a, sounds like a reasonable jump. Here's Stormy Watson. Again, contending for one of the top spots in the ladies' 100 kilo weight class. Equipped. We have Carson Harwood on platform two, representing Nina Powerlifting, opening us up with 67 and a half kilos. And on platform one, we're gonna have Anaya opening up with 75 kilos. Really gonna be the battle there in the 100 plus kilo class with Leah um, kind of vying for a podium position. All right, folks, Chloe Moore is about to come up again to platform three to retake that 60 kilos. And then I smoked that opener on platform one. Cambria Holmes is going to come out next on platform one, opening up with 97 and a half kilos. Whew. That is 215 pounds. If you remember, she had a phenomenal squat day going three for three, ending with 242.5 kilos. Cambria looking to close out the flight on platform one. Folks, unfortunately, it's not looking good for Chloe Moore there. Wasn't able to come away with that bench press. I wonder if she's just out of the game. And that's very tough to come back from, too. I mean, powerlifting is almost as much mental, even more so mental, than it is physical. Uh, oftentimes, the... I mean, Oftentimes the mind can can overcome whatever the body allows it. And so a lot of that comes with building the experience on the platform as well. You know, a lot of these kids we were talking about, some of them could be their first or second meet all the way around. And that's going to take some experience getting used to, you know, being on a national stage like this as just your second meet because you would have had to done once at post QT, but having this as just your second meet, this is a lot. Mm -hmm. This is a lot. You are showing your physical abilities in front of hundreds of people, being judged by three very strict national judges. I mean, the nerves are got to be high for these lifters. Hopefully, Savannah on platform one can turn that around, hit I mean, did not hit 55 kilos on her opener, looking to hit it on her second attempt. And that was a good lift by Kylie on platform three. We're taking the bar up to 67 and a half kilos for Tegan Becker. Savannah Martin trying to get on the board here with 55 kilos, 121 pounds from Mauston High School. Rhea Johnson on platform two from Troy Athens.
Yeah, and this is a bit of a repeating storyline here. People missing their openers and either opting to keep or um, go up. Both ladies on platform one and three have decided to keep that weight. I like that call. Just trying to play it safe, trying to get on the board. Yeah, clearly no problem for Tegan on strength. Or Savannah. I wonder what that first call was for, but it looks like it was a good lift on two. So both lifters are now on the board. Leah Warner on platform two, taking 87 and a half kilos for her bench opener, looking to close out the flight. I might be a little biased, but Leah Warner always comes to the platform fresh to death. I mean, drippy like rain. If the hair matches the singlet matches the fit, it's gonna be a good day automatically. All right, Adeline on platform one, looking to retake 60 kilos, 132 pounds. Oh man, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't mean to interrupt. Yes, you do. <laughs> but I'm here with the incomparable Nick Stevens. Oh, goodness gracious, ladies and gentlemen. We're joined by the one and the only Gino, the pirate of powerlifting. Gino, how's things been uh, throughout this whole weekend? How are you feeling? I'm, you know, today I feel surprisingly well, given this is day four, and we just did two 14-hour days in a row, back-to-back -back with three simultaneous platforms. So my voice is hanging in there, the energy is gonna be high, and we're gonna finish this out strong. It's like the final lap in a race, you know what I mean? You gotta put that extra kick in. But these kids, man, they are all heart. I don't care if they're heavyweights or lightweights, they're maxing out their numbers, they show so much energy and enthusiasm, and they are the future of USA powerlifting. That's absolutely right. And I see we, uh, I see you know that you, you brought the best fit for day four here. <laughs> I, I am, I am wearing a. <laughs> I I am wearing a new fit for today. I'm all done up in pink. I even got. Don't tell anybody this. I even got pink eyeshadow on. Uh oh. Uh oh, <laughs> folks. <laughs> well, hey, if you're if you're watching at home, you you won't have the pleasure of seeing uh, Gino on the platform, but you at least got to hear his wonderful voice. Gino, what's been your favorite part of the competition thus far? Uh, thus far, I'm gonna say my favorite part is watching these kids hit PRs. Not. Not national records, not world records. They, I don't, they come out here and I can see on the board they're in 28th place and they're fighting for 27th place. Doesn't matter. If they come out here and get a PR, I don't care if they're in 127th. They jump off the platform, they're hitting the ceiling because they are so happy that they're getting PRs at the national level on the big stage down here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's absolutely right. And we're seeing some insane ways from these high schoolers. I mean, oh, yeah. some weights that we don't even see from the open lifters True. and the older lifters i mean True. uh there's some lifters in the second flight on uh platform one opening with close to 600 pounds yeah, on squat that's absolutely insane there's one kid down there weighs 150 kilos so you know 330 pounds and when i when i saw him walk out i turned to his coach i said is this kid in high school? <laughs> they said, they said oh, he's six foot six, 315 pounds, 330 pounds. The kid is huge. And he put up almost 700. And what I also like about this competition is I'm seeing a lot of equipped lifters. You know, I got my start. I started in announcing in the late 90s, and it was all equipped. That's and, right. Yeah. And I'm happy to see that equipped hasn't gone by the wayside yet. And we still have some people that know how to maximize the equipment. And that's a real talent. And that takes years. These lifters are only going to get stronger as they learn how to utilize the bench shirt and everything else with equipment. So that's absolutely right. We've been saying this whole time, like whatever the parents are feeding these kids at home, whether it's, <laughs> whether it's miracle Grow in the cereal or, or something else, keep on doing it because the future is definitely <laughs> miracle strong. miracle <laughs> Grow in the cereal. Yes, they're going to have blue tongues. <laughs> well, listen, I, I won't stay. I, I, I know you got uh, three simultaneous platforms to do. I just wanted to come, come by, Nick, and say hello to the, to the three of you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at the next competition. I appreciate it. Are you be uh, seeing that next week? Yes, will you? I'll see you there, day oh, one. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, hey, by the way, folks, you think this is bad. CNAT's, ne this was three platforms, 860 lifters. CNAT's next week is four platforms, 1,300 lifters. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to go insane with that. I'll say, better pack the chloroseptic and honey for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I love well, you guys. Well, thank you so much, Gino. Appreciate it. Thanks. I love you guys. Love you too, Gino.
Oh, my goodness. Bit of starstruck right there. <laughs> Back over to, to the action, we have Tiffany Hensley over on platform three from Whitehall, Leah Sanchez on platform one, and Mega on platform two. Now, folks, if you're watching on platform three, the man behind the mic just now is now back to announcing. I'll tell you what, man, there's no, there, there's very few people within this sport who care more about just creating a good environment for the lifters than Gino, the pirate of powerlifting. Like you said, he got his start in the late 90s and has been at pretty much every single national level meet since then <laughs> uh, across all levels and across a few different federations. Always a pleasure to have him uh, host. Have him announce. Yes. Have him really, he gives his heart, um, kind of similar to the lifters there who give, who give their heart to the sport. So does Gina. Now, one thing we're seeing here, platform one, just to get back down to the action, it looks like they're putting like wooden blocks uh, on the in front of the bench there. Kevin, what, what's that all about? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, lifters have the option to uh, use wooden blocks, whether it be for a different level, uh, to have a different level in flooring, or just to just have, um, to be able to have an elevated surface for their feet to reach down. Sometimes these lifters come in all different shapes and sizes, might need a little bit of help having their feet remain flat on their ground. Yeah, so, the, so the rule book specified that they are allowed to use wooden blocks to set up their feet in order to perform the bench press. And there's different heights to the blocks as well. I think there's like three different heights, two or three. I'm not entirely positive of the numbers. They go up um, to 37 meters. And that's why she's a national level rep. <laughs> I mean, hey, I used to use blocks. <laughs> they, um, fair, they, fair. Can, they can be very useful, and especially if you've got lifters with shorter legs, it can be useful to get that leg drive because if they can't quite reach the floor, it can be difficult for them to have their feet flat on the floor. I've, I've struggled with that myself. And if they got the blocks, um, it can be a lot easier for them to have that leg drive. And again, speaking about leg, leg drive, let's, rem let's remember that the bench press is a full body movement, right? It's not just the chest, it's not just the triceps or shoulders. These lifters are using their back, legs, everything that every, th every single muscle in their body is coming into play and needs to be coordinated in order to perform a bench press. Yeah, I mean, if you're just using your chest in the bench press, you're doing it wrong. You're, you're really missing out. Mm -hmm, you're missing out on some extra strength that you can gain. Now, ladies and gents, unfortunately, Chloe is uh, going to time out the rest of uh, this bench press. Um, and I don't believe she's going to come back for deadlifts, which is unfortunate. However, she's still very, very young. Mm -hmm. She has her entire powerlifting career ahead of her. And like we were talking about yesterday, some of the strongest powerlifters in the world have come from bomb outs. Yep. You know, there's nothing stronger than trying to overcome something that affects your performance, affects your mentality, um, truly rising above. Yeah, it can really put a chip on your shoulder to train for that redemption meet. And now, Kevin, can you talk, a little, talk to us a little bit about what's happening on platform three? Uh, not, it's not looking like Chloe's going to time out, or not looking like Chloe's going to come out, but I mentioned uh, that they're going to time out the lift. What does that mean? Timing out means that the lifter will not come out for the lift, as mentioned, and she will run down the clock. Again, each lifter is allotted one minute to perform their lift to receive that start command. So if a lifter is timing out, it means that they will not come out for their attempt and therefore will run the clock, allowing the preceding lifters to adjust and know when exactly they will step on the platform. It's a very good uh, sportsman-like um, gesture, being able to give your lifters more time to rest. So very good sportsmanship by Chloe there, allowing herself to time out. Absolutely as well. I mean, and you know, kind of going along with that, you want to let that time or you want to let the whole minute run out because who knows, that lifter may be in the bathroom. Who knows, that lifter may be somewhere else, he may be outside talking to his mom, or whatever it may be. But you want to give them until that very, very last second to get their start command, or if it's in the case of the deadlift, initiation of that lift. Um, Cambria, platform one, a 225 pound bench, moving super easy for her second attempt. Oh, and unfortunately, I spoke too soon, that's gonna be a, I mean, it moved easy, but that's gonna be a no lift. She got two yellow cards and with the yellow cards, we are sort of 
playing a guessing game, especially when it looks clean from our end. So that could have been her foot lifting, that could have been her butt lifting, could have potentially been jumping a command. Hopefully she'd come back and hit that big bench on her third attempt. And we're into third attempts on platforms one and three, close to it on platform two. Kylie is gonna need help. And five kilo jump uh, going from second to third it's kind of inching towards that kind of end range of what is going to be. I mean, you have to take two and a half kilos, but five and a half can be tricky for some folks, depending on you know body weight, strength, a whole bunch of factors. Um, and so I think that jump might be just a little bit too big. However, that's a five kilo uh, deficit that we can very easily come back from on deadlifts. Here's Savannah. Yep, Savannah taking a 10 kilo jump. Oh, okay, so Savannah Marvin, what happened with the bench shirt there? Like I was saying earlier, one small miscue in that range of motion could spell disaster. Oftentimes, in order for lifters to get the most pop out of that uh, bench t-shirt, they have to touch a little bit lower uh, on their chest than they normally would. Now, it looked like, it looked like Savannah Marvin might have touched just a little bit too low on the chest there, and then we saw the elbows uh, kind of come under in there. We had to have the spotters grab it. Platform three, Gracie trying to come back and hit 75 kilos. I think she's done it. Yep, yeah, three white lights. Redemption on the bench press. We have Adeline with the grinder on platform one. Fortunately, not able to get it. Same type beat for Trinity. Needs help from the spotters, man. That's a second attempt, too. So it's going to be interesting to come back from that from the third. It did look like it was on strength. Now, like you were saying, Adriana, we've seen miracles before. So I imagine her coach is going to head here in the back, give her a nice little pep talk, get her mind right so she can absolutely crush that third attempt. Allison Hayes retaking 70 kilos on platform one. Come on, Gracie Clumper with one of the best grinds we've seen. Able to one pick of up the cleanest grinds. Five kilos. Two to one, <sighs> unfortunately gonna be a no lift. It seems that the judges might have seen a little bit of up and downward motion there, um, or possibly soft elbows. Bars loaded for Allison Taze. She takes down 70 kilos, trying to add on that extra five. Looked solid. There was a little bit of a bobble towards the middle, but did it go down? Unfortunately, Unfortunately two to one, it no lift. did. Ah, so we saw a downward motion cue, and then we also saw a yellow light underneath there, which could be could be a mistype, um, but you know could also be her butt came up just a little bit on one side. Uh, Might have jumped a command. We don't know. And on platform three, Taylor going to come out to 75 kilos. Hasn't missed a lift yet, really going to try to build that momentum as she is in a bit of a tight battle with about three other lifters for potentially walking away with a bronze medal. Oh, yeah, that's only a two and a half key spread. Yeah. Look at that. It's Taylor, Elena, and Tegan. Mm -hmm. And Gracie, not too far behind as well. All right, here's Leah Warner on two. Five kilo jump. This is over 200 pounds for Leah. Oh, Ooh. Leah. Leah's a strong cookie. Yeah, Leah's strong. And she's been at high school nationals before. She has that experience. Looking to pick up a title here. I believe she plays bronze at a previous high school nationals. A bronze, that's right, okay. Bronze, trying to pick up a gold and really in that hunt for the gold. And we are now into our third attempt benches on all three platforms. We have Charlie on platform three, Addison on two, and Crystal on three, on one. All right, here's Addison on platform two. Charlie Schroeder with a big grind on three. She's able to lock it out. 
boom, that's gonna be three white lights. What a phenomenal grind there. That is also three white lights for Crystal after having missed her second bench attempt. She picks it up on the third. Coming up next on three is Savannah da uh, Samantha Davis. Now, currently projected first uh, by a pretty sizable margin there. Currently forecasted with a 440 kilo total. Charlie, who just went, unfortunately, is a decent ways behind there. 397 and a half kilos on her forecast. But hey, we'll never know what happens. Addison coming up on platform two, looking to go six for six on bench press, taking a two and a half kilo jump. Uh, unfortunately, got stapled to the chest there. And that's a two and a half kilo jump. So the lowest increment jump you can make. Um, so she can walk away from that knowing that she really just gave everything she had on that bench. She didn't have another two and a half kilos. But let's see if we can regain that on the deadlift. Samantha, platform three, they are loading up a big 100 kilo bench press. That's a big milestone there, 220 pounds. All right, Leah Sanchez getting a lift off for 87 and a half kilos. Can we do it? Can we do it? Can we do it? No, it's got to be grabbed by the spotters and the loaders. And I but think that was a 12 and a half kilo jump from one to two. Whoa. I didn't even realize That's that. She took a 12 jump. and a half kilo jump. Smith on platform three. I believe this is a world record attempt for the team two division. Could have fooled me. Looked like a last warm up. Woo! That's a good lift. Wow. wow. And we do have another world record broken at the 2024 High School National Championships. I think at this moment, Louisiana is at its strongest. Mireya Robertson on platform one, going up seven and a half kilos to 92 and a half. Yeah, that's relatively a big jump in the bench press. And she did jump 10 from her opener to her second. See how she handles it, oh wow. Able to push past that and secure a 203 pound bench press. Huge milestone for Maria. And Faith Bonds is going to start off our next flight of lifters on platform three, and that was going to be a good lift. All right, up next is Laura Elian on platform three. 50 kilos, that is going to be 100 and help. 50 ten. kilos is going one, to be, one yep. ten. 110. Oh, I thought it was going to be 110. Gods, pounds. Kevin, are you there? <laughs> Shout out Kevin's Kevin right Papa. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny, <laughs> sorry. That <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you can tell we've been on the mic for four days straight. We're getting a little loopy loopy, but hey, we're having <laughs> a good time regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make it entertaining for you folks at home. Oh, man. Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about what a back spotter does uh, in regards to the bench press? I think that's one of their most important roles. Yeah, so our back spotter on bench press is really there to support the lifter in being able to hand off any bench press attempts. Again, if you, um, you clear, lifters have the option to receive a handoff from our back spotter, uh, meaning they can help them unrack the bar. A lot of these equipped lifters need help getting that bar into position so they can instruct the back spotter on how they want that barbell handed to them. So that's really important, getting your lifter into position. So lifters, ha lifters have the option to request one um, or not, but we'll see, it's completely up to the lifter's preference. Yeah, I think it's relatively more common to see um, that lift off just because these lifters don't really want to waste energy on the unracking portion of the lift. I mean, you want to save your energy for the actual lift itself rather than fighting with yourself to get it unracked if you have trouble with that, especially as we attempt maximal loads. And folks, if you're watching at home looking to get into powerlifting, and who knows, maybe you've got a meet coming up soon. If you're going out to the platform, you've got to let that head spotter know exactly how you want your liftoffs each and every time. 
case, case being, that back spotter is going to be giving, who knows, upwards of 10, maybe 15 handoffs. He's probably not gonna remember exactly how you want it. Always good to remind them. Um, they're not gonna be offended. Um, if anything, it's going to help you, it's gonna help them. At the end of the day, it's gonna result in a good lift. Cambria Holmes on platform one. She's our lifter who is forecasted well ahead in the 100 plus kilo division. Missed 102.5 um, on her second attempt. And I believe it might have been yellow cards. I don't think it was strength. So she's opted to take a two and a half kilo jump. And is she going to, going to come out? She might be coming out. There she is. <laughs> I think she was just getting the wrist wraps on. Yep, I think so. Here's Giselle, platform one, two. Two and a half kilo jumps, and she really gives it all she had there. All right, Cambria. Platform one, 100 plus kilo weight class for the equipped varsity. 105 kilo, huge bench press, 230 pounds. Oh, oh and unfortunately, that is a no lift. And it looks like she had a tough time getting to the chest. And that's where you run into that tough situation where she missed it on her second. You have that conversation. Um, they decided to opt to go up anyways by two and a half kilos. They have Kendall Vett on platform two. Right there for Samantha Joe Walden. Now, on an opener, especially on bench press, you don't want to have something that's too, too heavy because you can't really take larger jumps on bench press. It's a little bit more unforgiving than the squat or the deadlift. Um, and so it's really going to come down to some smart decisions made there by both the athlete and the handler. And unfortunately, you're going to have to grab that one from Carson Harwood on platform two. Now, Trinity Mook is going to try and retake that 72 and a half. That's 159 pounds. Riley on three, representing Cajun Prep, our host. And a smooth opener for Briley. And folks, we're already on to our second flight of power lifters on platform one, Brendan Taze, representing Falls County Elite, 253 pounds. And a good bench by Trinity Mook. She gets redemption for that 72 and a half kilos. And that is a phenomenal comeback. Brendan Taze making slight work of that opener at 253. It's a good lift. Bars loaded for Danielle on platform three. She's gonna open with 77 and a half kilos. 170 pounds. Very, very smooth there. Not necessarily last warm up speed type, but very, very good speed for an opener there. I imagine she's gonna be able to, you know, stay on whatever plan she had. Um, looks like she has tons of room left for the rest of her attempts. All right, here's Garrett Cook looking to go for a very uh, kind of close grip uh, positioning there. And you know what I just realized? It's probably a little bit easier uh, to get a little bit of a closer grip with an equipped, uh, with, a, with a bench shirt on, only because when you get down to that end range of motion, that's primarily chest, right? Chest is gonna be the prime mover there. But then with close grip, Triceps are the main mover anyway once we get to lockout. So, I wonder if that's going to be a more common thing we're going to see. Personally, I haven't tried equip lifting. I've only been a raw lifter. But I completely get what you're saying. You get that pop out of the chest when it's all chest. And then you have that lockout portion that's all triceps. And with that close grip, you're mainly utilizing triceps. So, who knows? Maybe that can work out for some of these lifters. 
We have Danielle on platform one, opening us up with 292 pounds. And folks, if you've never worn a bench shirt or worn uh, a squat suit or any sort of equipment, even knee wraps, I don't think that there's as much appreciation for how much work goes into a equipped powerlifting. I mean, getting into the suit is a warm up in and of itself. If you see some of these lifters come out, uh, like we saw in the squat, knee wraps are super, super tight. They're waddling to the platform. And even getting into those positions is going to be a workout in and of themselves. Here's Rhea Johnson, platform one, 82 and a half kilos, 181 pounds, representing Troy, Athens powerlifting. This is her third attempt. Beautiful work there for Rhea Johnson. I think oh. she'll come away with 82 and a half, and she does. What well, a way to come back from the missed second. I was going to say, and that was a two and a half kilo jump from the missed second. So and I really interesting think, that that worked. I really think she needed those extra seven and a half kilos to stay in the fight with Leah Warner, who's going to be coming up now, trying to add two and a half kilos to her total, trying to fend off Rhea from taking the top spot. Here's Corbin Platform One, coached by Lorenzo Barnes, one of the strongest 140 plus lifters in the USB. You in the la 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 in the USAPL. <laughs> this is 314 pounds. And Leah, unfortunately, no lift on Platform Two, but she walks away with 92 and a half kilos. And how does that factor into the forecasted total there? So we know Rhea got that last one, which might have given her a little bit closer to inching towards that first place spot. Yeah, that was definitely a really pivotal third attempt for Rhea to hit. Um, currently, if they do not change their opening deadlifts, which you can change once, Leah's going to hit a 400 kilo total on her opener, while Rhea's going to hit a 390 kilo total. Very so Leah's race. ahead, but um, Rhea could possibly get in there if. Leah starts to slip up. I was gonna say, I'm excited for that battle. We're gonna have to wait till deadlifts on that one. Next platform comes up, platform two. Here's Riley Willie. I almost said Riley Wiley. But Riley Willie, 42 and a half kilos and 93 pounds. And Emily gets the start command on platform three. Bit of a fight there. Smooth grind. If she does have another two and a half kilos, that'd probably be the safer bet. Definitely, in my, in my opinion, you know, just from watching this one angle, I don't think she might have had another five kilos. Uh, let's take a look at lifting cast. Let's see what she puts in there. We have some big bench openers on platform one. Rick Boats on opening us up with 330 pounds on just the opener. Wow. An interesting case with Rick, we saw that head come up off the bench. It's, it is now a rule where the head is allowed to come off the bench before it wasn't able to, unlike in other federations. And you find that a little bit more commonly with equipped lifting as well, um, just because they need to utilize that momentum, that pop coming out of the chest. Uh, similarly with lifters that sink a little bit more uh, when they bring the bar to the chest. And yes, it does look like Emily put in, whoa, what? Seven and a half kilos. Let's see if she can do it. Mm, okay, hey, I've been proven wrong many, many times this weekend. I would love to be proven wrong again. Caleb Bordelon, 363 pounds for an opener. Wow, and if you remember from the squad event, Oh yeah, makes it move fast off the chest. If you remember from the squad event, Caleb is our lifter who squatted 310 kilos for his third attempt squat. All right, bars loader for Maya. We're hearing all the support. Two and a half kilo jump from that opening attempt.
We hear a lot of support for Maya out in the back from Nina Powerlifting. I'm saying, they've got me kind of locked into this platform now. Oh, wow. wow. An easy second attempt for... I want to say a lot of that was powered by by the team and the support behind her on that I bench press. I think so. I think so. I mean, that's the thing with these national level events. We're going to see that um, in this session and also in later sessions. And even at um, Collegiate Nationals next week, the crowd really gets behind these lifters and gives a lot of power to them. And the not only that, but it's lifters that maybe folks don't even know. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, your exactly. you're, you're direct competitor who may be from seven states away that you've never even met could become your best friend. And that's, I think, one of the beauties of uh, the sport of powerlifting. Everyone is just here to try to get better, lift the most that they can, and just have a good time at the end of the day. At the end of the day, what we do, anything we do is just so we can have fun, guys. Briley gonna come out on platform three to 75 kilos. Really in a tight battle there with Grace Chatelaine. They had a squat battle, squat world record battle, going tit for tat. I mean, their forecasted total right now is at the exact same total. Briley, I just love the phrase tit for tat. <laughs> Briley with a really aggressive 10 kilo jump on bench press. We'll see how that pans out for her. We have Ben over on platform one. Wow, and that moved like an opener. She definitely has probably another 10 kilos. Yeah, that was that was phenomenal. <laughs> Natasha Cruz on the opposite end, only jumping two and a half kilos in the bench. That's going to be relatively more common than taking that 10 kilo jump that Briley did. She's got a decent margin uh, behind Grace, but also in front of Danielle. Uh, it's about a about a 27 and a half kilo deficit um, from Grace, but she is up from Danielle. Looks like upwards of about 30 kilos or so. Yeah, so she's probably slotted in that um, bronze medal position, but you never know what can happen. Here's Garrett Cook. Cooking. Ooh, Daytona Hensley with a smooth, controlled, a tad slow of an opener there, but she'll come away knowing she's on the board. Cameron Hall on platform two isn't isn't having the best days after only hitting her second squat, but she's looking to clean that up over here on bench press, opening us up with 67 and a half kilos. Danielle with a very smooth 80, uh, 85 kilo attempt. 187 gets three white lights. And that was also a smooth opener for Cameron. It would pick up three white lights. Now, Grace on platform three, all eyes on this 90 kilo battle, while Briley opted to take a 10 kilo jump to her second attempt. Grace only opted to take two and a half kilos. Let's see how she moves this. And with this one, it's gonna put her in striking range, only seven and a half kilos. Here we go, Grace. World record squat, clean run on the second attempt bench there. Provisionally only behind Grace by seven and a half kilos at the moment. Yep, and that is if Briley is able to get her um, third attempt bench. Of course, third attempt bench is the most missed lift, so this can that can shake up the placing. We'll just see what happens there. Moving over to platform one, we have Benjamin over opening us uh, taking a second attempt over 300 pounds. That's a good lift for him. Followed by Daniel taking us up to 319 pounds. Yeah, it took a big jump there, 12 and a half kilos for Daniel.
We have Lara on platform three, representing Troy Athens. Daniel coming down with 145 kilos. And that's going to be a good lift there on platform one. Platform two, Riley's getting set up with 45 kilos, only opting to take a two and a half kilo jump. See how she handles it. We have Faith on platform three, taking a five and five kilo jump, going from 45, 50, and now taking 55 kilos for her third attempt bench. That's a good lift on platform two. Weston on platform one, going up to 157 and a half kilos in the 110 kilo division. Faith gets a bit of a long pause there. Unable to stick with it, and good catch by the spotters. That's a good press for Weston on platform one. Yeah, it looked pretty smooth for the second attempt. Giselle taking a seven and a half kilo jump over on platform two, 115 pounds. Emily on platform three. Rick Bowes on platform one, hit 150 kilos. It didn't look like the fastest opener, took a 10 kilo jump. I'm interested to see how he handles this, 352 pounds. Head coming up, that's completely okay. Oh, oh, good catch from the spotters. It started to go towards his head there. Really good catch from the spotters. He is on the board. Rick um, not having the best day so far. I mean, only walked away with one squat on the board. Now failed his second attempt. And with equipped, he could just have made some sort of technical error there. And I expect him to come back on the third and attempt to hit it. Daphne, platform at three, 65 kilos here. Relatively close grip. Oh, and unfortunately, it's going to be no lift for Daphne on platform three. She just walked away with 62 and a half kilos. And that's kind of the thing on um, um, bench press. Since you can only take a two and a half kilo jump, sometimes you might have had one kilo in the tank. Sometimes you might have had two. Um, but two and a half kilos is the minimum amount that you could take. And... Oftentimes you see that being the case for jumps from the second to third attempt bench presses Just to see if it's there and if you don't have it you don't spend too much energy. It's not like um, failing a squat and You do she did walk away with the most that she could do for that day Kind of same situation there with Chelsea on platform three we're taking the bar up to 385 pounds over on platform one by Caleb Bordelin. Yeah, Caleb really having a good day so far. Hit that 310 kilo squat. And this is a big bench, 385 pounds in the 110 kilo equip division. Maya's got a lot of support here on platform three from Nina powerlifting. Caleb coming down slowly and controlled with 175 kilos. Can he press it up? Yes, he can. I imagine that's a good lift. Yep, three white lights. Daytona on platform two, 70 kilos. Currently forecasted in third. And on platform three, Samantha hit her opener, jumped up five kilos, relatively a conservative jump, but that's the thing with the bench. You could smoke an opener, jump five kilos, and then it just doesn't work out. I'm not sure if she missed it on the technical issue or strength, 
but she's coming back out, trying to hit that on her third attempt to get redemption. And on platform one, we have Corbin going up to 402 pounds and he for jumped his third, second bench attempt. And he jumped 40 kilos to this. Let's see how he handles it. Okay. He's able to lock it out. A bit shaky, but let's see what the referees say. Two, Two to, to one. one. Good, lift. A good lift. Wow, and that is a 400 pound bench there for Corbin. We are now into our third attempt benches on platform one. We have Ben Lazowski going up 10 kilos to 226 pounds. Briley, platform three. Now, Briley took that big 10 kilo jump to her second attempt, made it move like an opener. Now taking a seven and a half kilo jump to 82 and a half kilos in that battle there with Grace Chatelain in again, the 90 kilo division. Again, Briley really trying to pick up valuable kilos that'll be added to her total. Oh, and that's tough because her second attempt moved so smoothly and it based off the second attempt i mean it moves so fast you would think that the seven and a half kilos can be there but that's the dicey proposition with taking a relatively big jump in the bench press sometimes you're just gonna hit the wall that fast and that was a crucial miss in the and battle and that really swings the door wide open as we see in the forecasted placings briley is now forecasted in second yeah, it's, it's really going to be tight between her and Grace. It's going to come down to the last pull. And even though in the bench press you're not deciding your placing there, the bench press is critical for adding those kilos. You've got to take the proper jumps. Try not to expend too much energy by opening up too high, having to take small jumps for potentially missing a lift. And it's crucial to make your lifts, especially when you're in a tight battle. We're going to see if the attempt selection for Grace pays off as she looks to close out the flight in just a few lifters. Garrett Cook, platform one. 130 kilos. Is he going to break to, through that sticking point? Unfortunately, kind of the same situation as platform three. Hit his second attempt, jumped seven and a half kilos, and it just wasn't there for the day. We're now taking the bar up to 308 pounds on platform one for Brendan Taze. Danielle on platform three. Big milestone here, 90 kilos, just a bit under 200 pounds for her third attempt. Daniel looks relatively smooth. Daniel currently forecasted in the top four. And up now on platform three, we have Grace. As we saw earlier with Briley, she missed her third attempt bench. And now that door swung wide open. Let's see if Grace can pick up these valuable two and a half kilos to the total. She's currently forecasted in first. Yeah, and honestly, as a lifter, if you are seeing your competitor miss and you end up hitting, that's a big deal. That's a big deal for the mental thinking, hey, I've got that positive momentum going into deadlifts. Now Grace did miss her third attempt squat, leaving kilos there. See if she can pick it some up here in the bench. Can she and lock she's it out? What grind. a grind. And we're in for a battle in the 90 kilo division. Yeah, phenomenal job there from Grace. Her competitor missed, leaving, I mean, since Briley took that big jump, leaving a good bit of kilos on the table. Grace going three for three in the bench. And we have just finished up our benching over on platform three. We're gonna take a 10 minute break and get us set up for deadlifts. Folks, it is now 10:17. Uh, it is well within breakfast time. If you haven't had your toast yet, go ahead and butter that up and we'll see you in about 10 minutes as Kevin just said. <laughs> I was in the bathroom, what I miss folks? Anything cool? We have the interesting battle over in the 90 kilo division with Briley and Grace. Ooh. We also saw a 400 pound bench press from Corbin on platform one. And he jumped, get this, 40 kilos to that attempt. That is absolutely insane. Oh my gosh. 40 so, kilos, that that's insane. unheard of for even the open big boys. That's insane. I believe, it, I believe it might've been a case where he took his opening bench raw and then threw on the equip, equipment oh, wow. after the. 
And you can see some lifters do that, making it all the more interesting when you're watching a quit because they know that the equipment is just so volatile that sometimes they're going to take their opener super light, maybe even raw, like Kevin said. Just try to get on the board, and then you can have some fun with the equipment, hit some bigger weights. I didn't even think about that. That's a very big brain move. I like that. Here's Daniel Rodriguez, 330 pounds over on platform one. We're well into third attempts on platforms one and two. Aubrey, after missing her second attempt bench, opted to, to, to jump two and a half kilos to 62 and a half. There we go, closer grip on this one. Can she find her Able way through lockout? Yes, she can. Looked like a clean run, and it was. She gets that redemption back two and a half kilos. Yeah, and it was dicey to go up on her third attempt, but it pays off. It's always a very calculated risk whenever you miss a lift and you go up uh, in wait for that second attempt. It's always a, a good roll of the dice. Um, and it really just is it's up in the air, you know? Whatever yeah. happens, happens. Yeah, and it depends on how you miss the lift, if it was just some sort of weird technical issue or a misgroove. And Rick Bowes. Missed his second attempt, opting to stay the same way. He missed it on a strength issue or potentially misgroove. Trying to get redemption here. Can he lock it out? Kendall's yes, he can. Oh, my gosh. What oh, a fight come on. for Rick Bowes. Come on. And the referee yes. says two to one. Good lift. Oh, I was even stoked about that one. You want to talk about a grind, ladies and gentlemen. And it's so much harder to grind even with equipment. Yep. Wow. Excellent, excellent work there. On platform two, Daytona taking a two and a half kilo jump to 72 and a half kilos. She's pretty much, um, she's got a spread between her and the silver medal as well as, as well as her and fourth place behind her. So if she hits her lifts, doesn't find disaster in the deadlift, she should be walking away with the bronze medal. A little bit of a long press there. Fortunately, no lift for Daytona. Here's Weston Bono on three. This is close to, this is close to 374. And it's a good lift, he'll have a clean run. Weston Bono having a great day thus far, only having missed that second attempt squat. Anthony and Caleb, who are going to come after him, are also having really great days thus far. Hope I didn't just commentate or curse that. Anthony John Quillman, 175 kilos, 385 pounds. Shoo. And now that is a two and a half kilo jump. So very safe jumps across the board. If he misses this, we know that he probably didn't have another two and a half kilos in him. Again, just really looking to hit lifts and build the total. Again, that's how you win national championships here. If you can make two and a half kilo jumps, five jumps for all of your, uh, for all your lifts comparative to another lifter who may jump seven and a half, 10, 12 and a half keys. And miss them. And miss them. Who's the, re who, who's the winner there? I mean, it was no coincidence that yesterday in the 60 kilo and 90 kilo class, the winners came out on top and they made the most lifts out of their competitors. Right. Anthony John, what a wonderful bench there. That's a good lift. Here we go, our second 400 pound bench of the day with Caleb. Jumping seven and a half kilos to 182.5, that is the magic. 400 pound bench. Ooh, I met, so he took a larger jump from first to second, um, and that second moved fairly well, so I believe this is uh, in order to get to that milestone lift. Yeah, and since he had the phenomenal squat, he is well ahead in the class. So not really risking too much by going for that milestone, whereas if he were in a tighter, tighter battle, he might take a um, more conservative jump. Right. Caleb just really looking to extend his lead currently. Gets to the chest, able to press it. Can those triceps kick in? And he is grinding. Oh my gosh, what a grind. Oh no. It started to shake a little <sighs> bit, uh, and then it started dipping down on that right side. Listen, at high school nationals, you have to go for big weights like that. And it was a two and a half kilo jump. Or we sorry, seven and a half kilo jump. So well within that range of quote unquote safe jumps, um, but it might have just bitten off a little bit more than we can chew. We had Corbin earlier taking a 
402 pound bench press after having taken a 40 kilo jump from the opener. He's moving up to 190 kilos, 419 pounds for his third attempt bench. Looking to close out our bench flight. It's a law on platform two, 82 and a half kilos for her third attempt. Also closing out the flight. Wow, and it moves great. That I think that was the perfect call. Yep. Two to one, that's a good lift. And she is going to finish up our action of the bench press on platform two. We're going to take a 10 minute break, get the platform out of the way, and we're going to get prepared for the real party with deadlifts. We'll see you in 10. Here we go, Corbin.
And welcome back, Platform 2. Glad you could join us. Kendall Vett is on her way up to 92 and a half kilos. Elena on Platform 3. Adeline representing, Adeline representing 9 for 9 Academy, lifting as a guest lifter today. Now, folks, uh, we mentioned uh, just, I mean, we touched on it very, very softly here, but when you're watching our deadlift action, you're going to see two different stances um, on the platform today. So uh, most folks, or I don't want to say most folks, but um, folks could opt to go for the conventional deadlift, like Kendall or Charlie on platforms two and three, respectively. And the conventional deadlift uh, entails the feet being fairly close together. Um, hands are going to be placed outside of the knees. It's a little bit longer of uh, a way to lock out, and it does place a little bit more uh, emphasis on the lower back and the hamstrings. However, it's a little bit faster off the floor. A lot of the time, we're going to find that issue at lockout. Conversely, we've got the sumo deadlift, um, which is basically the exact opposite of that. Uh, so with the sumo, feet are going to be placed fairly wider, uh, fairly wide, um, apart from each other, um, some folks like to even go as wide as toes touching the, the plates. Hands are going to be inside the knees, and uh, this is going to place a little bit more emphasis on the quads and the hips, um, and definitely the upper back as well. And it's going to be very, very slow off the floor, um, just because there's not as much of the initial momentum like you'd get from a deadlift setup, or uh, for a conventional deadlift setup. Uh, so it's going to be fairly slow off the floor, but once it gets past a certain point, sumo deadlifts are fairly easy to lock out. All right, bars loaded for Giselle, platform two, 127 and a half kilos, 281 pounds. Folks, again, if you want to take a live look at the action here, go ahead and type in Excuse me. Go ahead and type in into your browser at liftingcast.com. Once you get on that site, go ahead and scroll down to day four, high school nationals. Pick a platform and tune in on the action. There you can see live updates to folks' attempts, uh, as well as forecasted totals and changes in placing as we get into the nitty gritty of the competition. Addison on platform two. Did it work for an opener at 127.5 kilos? Oh, there's a storm coming on platform one. Stormy Watson. That's a good lift. And coming up on platform two, or sorry, platform three, got to have a little bit of faith in Bailey. Miss Faith Bailey, 135 kilos, 297 pounds. Here's Anaya on one, 275 pounds. And they are really trying to solidify a podium position in the class and probably a silver medal. Three white lights, good lift. All right, bars loaded for Alexis on platform two. This is 292 pounds, and she is in the Varsity Ladies 82 and a half kilo class, which I believe is one of the largest classes that we have for our ladies. I could be a little bit wrong. It might be right on par with uh, the 90 kgs. Yeah, about, about right. I think I think the 82 and a half is the largest that we have for this day. Um, we had some stacked classes in the previous days, but oh, yeah, for sure, for yeah, sure. you're right. I think 82 and a half is yeah, the I largest think, class. I don't think anybody can top the 75 kg boys. That is a big I think so. class. Over 70 lifters. Savannah Marvin looks like a good opener at 275. Good lift. Iris Harlow, like we saw with, uh, like I explained with the sumo, it's going to be a smidge slower off the floor, but a little bit faster at lockout than the conventional deadlift. We have Tiffany Hensley on platform three, already going up to 308 pounds on her second attempt deadlift. And now with the deadlift, since all you're doing is picking it up off the floor, you don't necessarily have to have any true eccentric motion to it. Oh, and what a fight for. Tiffany on platform three, 
can she lock it out? I believe there was some up I and down I saw a little yeah. bit of either up and down or a little bit of a hitch there. Oh, and the judges saw it. Yep. Yeah, no lift. And with the deadlift, you can kind of get away with taking a little bit bigger of a jump since, like I said, you're not having that eccentric motion. You're not having to, uh, uh, I guess, press it in any sort of way. You're just picking the weight up. And so in that regard, um, it's a lot easier to grind. Um, and with that, we can see probably some bigger jumps, um, especially as we get to third attempts when we start to see those change for placing. Cambria Holmes, platform one, 145 kilos, 319 pounds for the equipped ladies, 100 plus class. This is going to give her a 485 kilo total in the class, likely going to lock up the championship here unless they were lifters to make some big jumps for the um, to pull for the win. That's right. Gracie on platform three for the Raw Varsity 100 class. Smooth opener at 147, 12 and a half kilo jump. Like wow. we said, you can kind of get away with a little bit bigger of a jump, and that moved clean for a second attempt. Charlie, platform three, missed her opener, just playing it safe, trying to repeat it. Oh! Oh, man. I wonder what happened there. So she didn't technically... Well, the weight came off the ground, so that was technically initiation of the lift. So I don't know if she'll be able to take it again. There's been some of confusion there. I saw the coach looking at the plates. I think it, it could have been a misload, potentially. Okay, but we're going to get that sorted out on platform three. It looks like... I mean, I imagine it was probably a, a misloaded weight issue. We see uh, yeah, she our might have technical felt it controller. as she was going up. Mm -hmm. I, I, I first thought it could have been um, some sort of back issue, like uh, dealing with an injury. Right. But... There is some confusion there with the referees standing up. The technical controller potentially could have been in this load. Okay. All right, so it looks like they're going to give her a relift. They're going to let her come out again for the weight. Typically, you're going to see a relift at the end of the flight, but here we go, Tegan, trying to come back from adversity, to get this weight, and she hits it. See what the judges say? Uh, okay, lights. so they had Charlie's weight loaded for Tegan. I That's see. what it was. And so when she started pulling, her coach was like, stop, no, 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 that's not your weight. Let's go back and change it. Good call by the coach. There we go. Now, here is Charlie Schroeder. She missed that opener at 152 and a half kilos. That's 336. And that was a good lift for Rhea on platform two 160 kilos charlie locks it on platform three is it going to be good enough yes it is three white lights she is on the board and in the hunt for silver medal in the 100 kilo division we have michaela on platform two currently forecasted in fourth and that is a good lift Leah Warner, platform two, going to come out to 165 kilos. Now, Leah, in a battle here for the for the championship between her and Rhea. Rhea currently has a 390 kilo total, and this is going to give Leah a 400 kilo total. Leah cannot miss. Otherwise, Rhea is going to have an opportunity there to pull for the win. Again, one of these situations where every kilo matters and attempt selection is going to be key. Oh, and unfortunately, that is going to be a no lift for Leah based on lockout. So she did get those two red cards there. They thought that, I believe, her shoulders or her knees were not locked out. Now, you know what? Oh, I thought Nate was going to go to the jury on that one. But yeah. at that point, at that point all you got to do is I lock imagine, in. Mm -hmm. She's got to lock in, lock out the lift. And I think she is likely going to repeat it. It didn't look... It looked a little tougher than an opener should. So I imagine she's going to repeat it, and she needs that lift to really stay in the hunt um, with Rhea Johnson. I mean, Rhea 
on her second attempt is going to pull for that 400 kilo lift. And she weighs lighter than Leah. So this is really shaping up to be a tight battle in the 82.5 kilo class. And so you talk, um, let's talk a little bit about body weight in terms of um, how that affects placing. So let's say Leah and Rhea were to um, hit the exact same total. So if they were to hit the exact same total, the lighter lifter is going to have the advantage. So Leah weighed in at 81 um, kilos. Rhea laid in relatively light in the class at 76.7 kilos. So if they were to post the same total, then Rhea would take the advantage there. Trinity Muck on platform two, missed her open, oh, and unfortunately that's gonna be a no lift and she knows it on platform two. That's the dicey thing with missing your opener, jumping up 10 kilos. Especially that changes the entire game. Especially when you're close to that top end. Again, one of the situations where you're really with your back against the wall, when it's a national championship, you take those risks of jumping 10 and a half kilos, knowing that you have it in the tank, but maybe due to a technical issue, you don't get the lift, and now you're really in a position when it, where it's all or nothing on that third attempt deadlift. Speaking of all or nothing, we're on to third attempts. Platform three, now the party has started. Here's Kiera Nickel in the ladies' raw 90 kilo weight class. Where is she sitting currently? If successful, she will stay in second place. Oh, wow. Oh, falls backward. I think she's okay. Okay, where did that put her? So she is currently in second for the raw 90s? Yes, but not? there's gonna be um, quite a few a 90 kilo flight. lifters mm -hmm. in the second flight. Again, these forecasted totals are provisional based off of current openers or inputted attempts from these lifters. Lift is good on platform two. Up next is Addison Newman. 10 kilo jump to 137 and a half. Tiffany Hensley is looking to retake 140 kilos to put her in provisional eighth place before the next flight. Savannah Marvin, 12 and a half kilo jump. Oh, can Tiffany, Tiffany finish? With a can, tough she finish? Fight. can she finish? That looks way better than the last one. Get that down, command. <laughs> oh, two my to one. goodness. That's going to be two to one. I would go to the jury there. Here we see on platform three, there's an attempt change in progress. We already see some jockeying for positions here. Faith ba Bailey, provisionally, if successful, will stay in first place before the next flight. If I'm not mistaken, she's currently slated for first, no? Yes, currently. Again, these lifters in the first flight are really trying to put up the biggest totals they can before the next flight of lifters rolls around. Giselle Lara with a good lift, two to one. Ooh, the storm is a coming. Miss Stormy Watson, a 20 kilo jump. That's a big jump. See how she handles it, about 44 pounds. Looks good. I wonder if they're gonna see a little bit of up and downward motion um, hopefully they didn't. Oh my gosh, they did. Ugh, side refs. That's gonna be a no lift. We gotta have some faith in Bailey. 142 and a half kilos, seven and a half kilo jump. Can she get it off the floor? And it's not budging. That side spotter just thought they turned on the gravity button. Unfair, bro. Anaya Johnson, very smooth second attempt at 145. Yep, she took a 20 kilo jump as well. Handled that well, three white lights for her. Probably locked up the silver medal with that lift. And Cambria Holmes, currently in gold in the 100 plus kilo equipped division, looking to extend her lead by five kilos here on platform one. Over in the 100 kilo division, we have Taylor on platform three. Go to lift for Taylor, who is currently in third place. All right, now we've got Miss Cambria Holmes. Like we said, this is 330 pounds. 
and Cambria at the moment is at a pretty high margin uh, ahead of Anaya. It's looking like about a 50 about kilos. A 30, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. I know how to do math. I went to school. She's looking to just extend her lead. And she hits it. Three white lights. Maria on the platform one. Jumping 17 and a half kilos. Pretty big jump there um, to 157.5. Now Charlie on platform three. Charlie's in the 100 kilo division. She's currently in the silver medal place. Likely not going to change. Trying to hit that big 400 kilo total. Locks it out. I really hope that the knees didn't come out on that one. Oh, oh it and then did. Unfortunately, that's going to be a no lift for Charlie. But she still ends off in the silver medal. Nothing to sneeze at there. Mireya is able to secure her 17 and a half kilo jump on deadlift. Currently sitting in second, looking to extend that position. Up to bat now, Leah Sanchez going to retake 165. Carson Harwood locks out the same, uh, 155, excuse me. 10 kilo jump from the first, and that's a good lift. Currently in second place in the 82 and a half kilo class. Added 10 kilos to that. Trying to fend off Kalani, Michaela to take that podium position. What a pull from Grace on platform three, who currently po pulled herself into podium level position in the 100 kilo division. Leah Sanchez. That's going to be two to one, no lift. Very interesting cases here on platform three. We have attempt changes in progress as these ladies are jockeying for position. We now have Ingrid coming up for 157 and a half kilos. Yes, so what happened there is Tegan was slotted to go first on that platform, but she changed her attempt, changing the order of attempts um, because we always have to have an ascending bar. So Ingrid's going to go first and then Tegan's going to be trying to pull from fifth into fourth place. Now, Leah Warner on platform two missed her opener, opted to jump up two and a half kilos anyways. At first, we thought um, we were kind of looking at each other. We thought it was a 10 kilo jump, but I think the scoring table just had a little mishap there. Leah in a battle with Rhea, but she needs this lift to stay in the meet, stay in the fight. Come Gonna on. See what the judges Is say. she able to get it? Two to one, one. Good, good lift. lift. She is back in the hunt for the national champion, and Rhea Johnson going to go right after her, adding 10 kilos to her deadlift. Now, Leah, with that lift, currently sits at 402.5, and I think that's why they made that two and a half kilo jump, because Leah, now sitting at 402.5, Rhea is coming out to hit a 400 kilo total. So Leah there, even though she missed her opener, she opted to jump up anyways to keep that advantage after the second attempts. That's gonna be a no lift for Tegan. Come on, Rhea. We have Looks a, like a good lift for her, 10 kilos up. We have Elena on platform three, who is currently sitting in six, looking to pull into fourth place. Trying to bump Tegan into sixth. Elena, after having missed her second attempt deadlift, is looking to retake six, 162 and a half kilos. That was a good lift by Elena. We have Samantha looking to extend her lead in first place in the 100 kilo division. Yep, and she is way in the lead there. This isn't going, she's not risking her um, gold medal position here. She's the last lifter in the 100 kilo division, just trying to extend her lead to a big 465 kilo total if she makes this. Samantha trying to pull for a world record total here in the 100 kilo class. She's already slated for first. Yep, she's already secured that first place position, already secured that national title. Just trying to add the cherry on top with this world record attempt, trying to beat that world record total here. Can she oh, lock wow. it out for that world record total? Yes, she can. Samantha Davis. Oh, still Beautiful fighting to lock it finish. out. 
Oh, come on, come on, head ref, give it to her. Oh, no, jury. Man. jury. I would run to the jury. Go run to the jury, jury. Right That now. was so close. Well, now, folks, I wonder how many of these coaches know about the jury. I wonder how many of them know about these rules because that could be very easily contested, and it's worth, it's worth a shot. Now, right. Trinity Muck, platform two, unfortunately facing a bomb out situation. She missed her um, opening attempt. It wasn't a strength issue. I think it was some sort of um, technical issue. Opted to jump up 10 kilos anyways. Got it almost to lockout, but then took a stumble. Stumbled a little bit, yeah. A stumble. Really needs this to stay in the meet. Facing bomb out on her last attempt. Oh, getting fired she's hype. up. I'm hype. Fired up. Let's go, Trinity. Come on. Show us something. Come on, Trinity. All you've got for this last pull, stay on the board. Ladies, 82 and a half kilo weight class, 292 Let's go, pounds. Trinity. Can she do it? She locks, locks it, it out. I think I she think can. She, I think Knees that's were a good locked. Lift. Hey. 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 And Trinity Woo. avoids disaster, stays in the meet. What a comeback for the her. The redemption that we're seeing, folks. What heart we're seeing from these kids. Over on platform one, we have Savannah in second place, just looking to extend her lead in that regard. She locks out her third attempt deadlift after having missed her second. Gets yeah. that down command. Three and white gets lights. Three white lift. lights. All right, folks, we're, uh, I don't know if we mentioned it yet, but we are on the third attempts, or our, our next flight on platform one, or three, excuse me. What a phenomenal grind on platform two, 140 kilos. <laughs> three white lights for Majka. Way to end the day, leaving it all on the platform there. A good eight for nine day for Majka. All right, here's the calm before the storm. Me Watson. 145 kilos, 319 pounds. Can she find her way up? Looks clean. Currently sitting in third place, looking to extend that lead. Come on, judges. <sighs> Two to one, no lift, unfortunately. She is still currently in third place now. Leah Sanchez, who's gonna come up in a few lifters, hasn't made an attempt yet. It's gonna need her last attempt in order to pull into third over Stormy. Good lift on platform three for Faith, opening up strong. Giselle Lara on platform three, looking to finish off a very clean day thus far. Uh, well, pretty clean day, having only missed that third squat and bench, but she's able to lock out this third deadlift. But I wonder if she locked out a little bit too far to un yep, the knees. And we're gonna find that a little bit more commonly um, well, she's, I guess you see a both win sumo and in deadlift. And on platform one, Allison Taze ends her day with a 367.5 kilo total, walking away with the 90 kilo national championship. Bar is loaded for Cambria. Well in first place on this one by a very sizable margin, at least 62 and a half kilos. And this is 336 pounds. Here's Cambria. Like we're seeing, folks, now she, she kind of does the sumo a little bit differently, and this just goes to show that everybody's different. Well, first of all, Cambria Holmes, your ladies 100 plus weight class equipped varsity champion. All eyes on platform one as we have Leah Sanchez coming up after having missed her opening and second deadlift attempt, looking to pull into third. This is really an all or nothing lift for Leah. Either she bombs out or she secures a silver medal. Here we go, Leah. Platform three, Grace hitting 160. 
going to hit 160 to try to hit a 452.5 kilo total. Let's go, Leah. Can Leah make it? Locks it out. Oh, come on, judges. Come on, judges. Good. Two to one. Two to one. Two to one. Leah has and Leah. solidified second place. Bronze medal. She is in but third. Yeah. yeah, I said that. That's what I said. We have Romeo, Maria. Maria Robertson coming up to pull into second, already in second, just looking to extend her total. Come on, Rhea, big jump here. Can she lock it out? Fine lockout, keep the knees straight, keep the knees straight. It's there. Locks it out. Gets that down command. Come on, judges, be nice to her. Wow. Three white lights. Lights. white lights. The 15 Your. kilo jump pays oh, off. Oh, wow. And now we have Crystal Martinez looking to close out flight A on platform one with a 200 kilo deadlift attempt. Does that make Maria our equipped 100 uh, kilo champion, or do we have one more lift? Uh, one more lift. Maria is in second. Crystal Martinez oh, Crystal coming up Crystal coming right now. 200 kilo attempt. Yep, Crystal has already secured that national title, looking to just extend her lead here. I think it's some sort of world record, either in the deadlift or total for Crystal Martinez. And this is a very sizable jump here, 17 and a half kilos. Edison on three, what a grind. Five pounds up from the second, and it's a good lift. She lifted all on the platform there. On platform three, we can see the paddle shaping up as Briley looking to hit her opener and pull into first over Grace. But we've got a lot of lifting left to go. Here's Crystal Martinez. This is a world record. We see Gino hyping up the crowd, getting everybody behind her. Crystal Martinez, already your national champion, trying to take home a world record as well, getting really fired up for this. Well, we've got Liam Warner coming up on platform two. Now, looking to solidify. Oh, actually, no, nothing yet. Crystal locks it out, gets that down command. Looks like a good live. Let's see what the judges say. Three Beautiful. white lights. That is a new world record for your national champion, Crystal Martinez, in the 100 kilo equipped division. And over in the 90 kilo division on platform three, all the ladies have made their opening deadlift attempts as we see the battle shaping up here with Briley and Grace. And we got yet another battle coming to an end on platform two as Leah currently in first place by just the slightest margin of two and a half kilos over Rhea. Now Rhea has the deadlift advantage here, is gonna be able to pull after Leah. Leah is trying to extend her lead by five kilos and that's really gonna force Rhea to pull potentially more than she's capable of. She's gonna have to make some attempt changes, bump up her third attempt in order to pull into that first place position. But first, and Leah has got to make Bar this. has not been loaded yet. All right, now Bar is loaded. Now let's see Leah here. Rhea's gonna have to come behind, likely change this attempt following whatever happens in this. Again, Rhea is attempt. the lighter lifter. Come on, Leah, finish, 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 finish. Beautiful, no, that's gonna be up and down motion. Oh no. That Two is to one. one. Now, Leah. That's that going to leave room wide open for Rhea Johnson to come behind. <sighs> and it looks like she dropped her attempt down possibly so she can win on body weight. Yep, Rhea definitely has the body weight advantage, weighing in only at 76.7. Now, you know what's the interesting situation here? Rhea only needs to match. She her. only needs to match her total, but. Rhea has the lower lot number, so she cannot go back down to 172.5. She's going to be forced to take 175 to pull for the win. Two and a half kilos more than what she needs. We're going to see that unfold on the next lift. But first, Kalani going to take 172.5 to end off her day. We see it here prompted on the screen on platform two. Attempt change in progress. She could be trying to um, change her attempt down but she can't because of that um, lot number situation that That's we right. talked about. The later lot number, if they are taking the same weight, the later lot number is going to go afterwards. And the lot number is just a random not, uh, random number slotted to these lifters, and it decides the order of weigh-ins as well as the order of lifting. 
We are currently getting things sorted out on platform two. Yes, I think it's that attempt change and they could just be telling them they need to make sure that it's a valid attempt change. We have the jury getting involved. We're seeing the battle unfold on platform three with these 90 kilo women. Yes, and it's, go ahead, Kevin. As we're moving through our second deadlift attempts, we see currently uh, Brisley forecasted in first, followed by Grace, not too far behind. They are currently forecasted, or they currently have the same total with Brisley weighing in just slightly <laughs> under Grace. Yes, and you know what's the interesting thing? when. Um, assuming that they hit their second attempts, they are still going to be on the same total with Briley in the lead on body weight. What a tight battle it is shaping up to be in the 90 kilo class. We have Kalani on platform two. If successful, we'll pull into fifth place. Wow, and it looked pretty smooth there it is. for a third smooth. attempt. Phenomenal job there for Kalani. Ends the day nine for nine. What Solidifying a great day for podium. Her. Now here we go. This is it. This is for the this title. Is for the win again. This Rhea for, the win. for all the marbles. Rhea Johnson was not able to lower her delf attempt due to lot number disadvantage. But so this, she, she's going for the gold yep. or the silver. Yep. Yep. Automatically she's guaranteed the silver, but pulling into gold medal position is Rhea Johnson, five kilos from her second attempt. And like you said, we are not allowed to go back down to her initial 172 and a half due to uh, Leah having the earlier lot number and putting on a heavier weight than that. Yes, and Rhea with her um, coaching decision there, they put in this number initially to be able to pull after Leah. But Assuming she, just, she hit her third attempt. Yes, exactly. They wanted to, let's see it. This is for gold. I'm shaking, folks. Can she, she do it? it out. Oh my gosh, what a last deadlift what are the judges for Rhea gonna say? Johnson. What I are the judges going gonna to say? Good. Two, Two to one. one. That's good. A Ladies good and lift. gentlemen, Rhea Johnson, your 90 kilogram varsity national and champion. 82 and a half <laughs> kilo champion. We wow. have just narrowly edging out Leah Warner by two and a half kilos. But that's not our biggest deadlift on platform two. We have Michaela Koenig on for a 402 pound attempt. That's a big milestone. Who's currently in third place, just looking to extend that total. Now we have in the platform three, we have Grace, who's in the battle with Brisley, taking their second attempt. She took a 15 kilo jump from 160 to 175. Let's see how that works out for her. Wow, and Grace currently in second place, but her and Briley currently tied at a 452.5 kilo total. This is going to pull Grace into the lead for the time being, but Briley is going to respond right after pulling back into the lead. Both Grace and Briley taking 15 kilo jumps after their opening deadlifts. Let's see how that works out for these ladies. And it's a tough one. I don't that is a think big that's going hitch to count. There. I think Grace is getting called for hitching. That's going to be a very big hitch there, unfortunately. And that puts her in a tough situation. Yes, yeah, so now Briley can have a little bit more breathing room pulling in, uh, maintaining that first place position. Again, yeah. if Briley hits her second attempt deadlift, she will be 15 kilos over Grace. And that is a big deficit to come back from, folks. Maya on platform three, currently in fifth place. Still going to stay fifth place with this pool. 10 kilos up from her opener, 175 kilos. Sticky at the top, but she locks it out. Real quick, folks, we are on to our next flight of lifters, well into it on platform one. We're gonna see some heavy weight from our lads. Daniel Rodriguez is gonna take 235 pounds for a deadlift. Now here's Briley Batiste. Now with this pull, we could see how the rest of the meet unfolds. Now, if she misses it, the margin is way smaller. If she makes it, like you said, Kevin, it's gonna be a 15 kilo margin to come back from for Grace. Now, here's Bradley walking up to the platform now. Let's see what she's got here. Yeah, this is a big pull, 424 pounds, and a big jump as well. I was gonna say, is that kilo uh, 15 jump. kilos? And they made this call because Grace had made that 15 kilo jump, but Grace didn't hit. So let's see how she handles it. Wow, and with ease, Briley. Oh man, Briley's gonna have to pull something nutty. Lead. 
192.5 kilos. That gives her a 467.5 kilo total. And you guys talked about it. Now that gives her a huge lead over Grace. Grace is going to have to, if she wants to pull for the win, she's going to have to up her third attempt from 175. Again, Grace is in a position where she's already secured her silver medal being ways above third place, but she's in a position where she has to either pull for the win or just extend her total and secure that silver medal position. We've got Abigail Stefanski on platform two, starting off our ladies' second flight, 120 kilos for an opener. Very easy there. A little bit of a wider stance conventional. Two to one, that's a good lift for her. Here's Caleb on one. 573 pounds for Caleb, an easy opener for him. Up next, we're already on to second attempts over on platform one. Brendan Taze, two and a half kilos up, so a very, very safe jump there for the men's varsity equipped 125 kilo weight class. This is 325 pounds. Riley on two, 275. That's an easy opener for her. All right, lots of support here for Lara over on platform three, represented by Troy Athens Powerlifting. This is 112 and a half kilos. Ooh, big fight there. Beautiful, smile at the top. She's happy with it, we're happy with it. The judges are happy with it, and that's gonna be a good lift. Sella on platform two with an easy opener at 125 kilos. Faith Bonts, third attempts are now underway on platform three. Things are getting real, folks. 140 kilos, 308 pounds. Can she get those knees locked out? Yes, she can, but I wonder if they became unlocked again. Nope, three never mind. Light, light, able to come back after missing her second attempt deadlift. Samantha Jo Walden taking a 10 kilo jump after she took a two and a half kilo jump from first to second and now a 10 kilo jump from second to third. Here's Ben Lazowski, 210 kilos. He's gonna retake that for his opener. I, I did miss what that opener um, infraction was for, but we might give a little bit of insight with this second attempt here. Samantha Jo. I think that's going to be a little bit of a ramp there, unfortunately. I think, I think I it, hope it not. might count. I, I hope it, not. Two to one. Two to one. Yeah, so that side judge thought so as well. But all you need, folks, in powerlifting, majority rules, two to one. Unfortunately, on platform one, that's going to be a no lift for Ben. It did just look like a strength issue. Hope, we've seen miracles happen before. Hopefully, he can come back and hit it on his third. Easy opener for Giselle. And here's Miss Emily Anderson, 145 kilos for the ladies 90 kilo weight class. Emily currently sitting seventh, or currently sitting eighth, moving into seventh. And unfortunately that's not going to move. Something about platform three, those spotters keep gluing the weight to the ground. That's not cool, man. Gotta stop that. Here's a list on platform one, easy 165 there. I'm standing up now. <laughs> Again, we see it prompted on the screen here on platform three. We saw some attempt changes in progress. We're already seeing that jockeying for position over on for the 90 kilo women.
All right, here's Danielle Doctor on platform three. Taking her last attempt at 172 and a half kilos. That's a seven and a half kilo jump from one to two. Pretty solidly in fourth place, just trying to extend her total here, end off three for three. Weston Bono, platform one. And end off nine for nine for Danielle if she makes that attempt. Two to one. Two to one, and she ends the day nine for nine, which seems to really be a unicorn here. What I'm a perfect say. day. We have over 850 powerlifters of the high school national championships from 45 different states. And I want to say, at most, probably 10, 15 to 20 at the most have gone nine for nine. We have Natasha in third place in the 90 kilo division, looking to just extend her podium position, taking a two and a half kilo jump. Oh, Anthony finds his way tough at lockout. That left side is kind of lagging just a little bit. He's Still not giving the down command it. yet. That's not going to budge, unfortunately. That's going to be a no lift. Come on, Can Natasha. Natasha lock this out? Finish, finish, finish. Oh, that's not going to go, unfortunately. But she really gave it all that she had. Her coach is coming out there to help her up. And she already secured her silver medal, her, her bronze medal. We now have Grace, who was in contention for the national championship, but after missing her second attempt deadlift, opted to only go up two and a half kilos to further extend her silver medal position. Here we have Grace on three. What and a run Grace by Grace. Did she just pull in the first? She just pulled in the first. Ladies and gentlemen. After missing her second attempt. Wow. Your 90 kilo. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 so no, no. This was yeah, the battle between so Grace and Briley. And Briley, um, if you remember, Grace missed her second attempt. Briley was able to get 15 kilos above her. Now Grace had to move up by two and a half kilos. And now we just saw the attempt cha change from Briley and we're gonna see her pull back into the win. The first Maya gonna pull a big 408 pound deadlift getting really fired up. The crowd's behind her. Can she stick with it? Unfortunately, that's going to be a no lift for Maya. Unfortunately, a no lift on two for Riley. Here's Benjamin on one. Frog stance. That's a big number there. That's almost 580 pounds. Now here's Briley Batiste. All eyes platform on platform three. Platform three. I mean, we told you this was going to be a big battle in the 90 kilo division, and it's coming down to the last deadlift as Briley, who made her second attempt move, changed her deadlift, only having to jump two and a half kilos to pull for the win over Grace. Can she do it? Let's see it right here, right now. Can she hit it like Sosa? Let's go, Briley. Rari's and Rovas for Briley Batiste. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your 90 kilo national champion. Confirmed. Three white lights. Three white lights. What a battle we saw there in the 90 kilo division. Briley oh, Batiste wow. walks was... away as your champion. That I don't know which battle was better, that battle over the 90 kgs or you with Mr. Eric Chen battling for fifth. Oh my God. Folks, these are some hardcore power lifters, some hardcore heart from these power lifters. And on platform three, that's gonna be the end of all of our action. We're all done on platform three. We are going to be right back. We're gonna get everything set up, take a quick break, and we 
are going to be back at one o'clock sharp. We'll see you then. Grab some lunch, sit back, relax. It's an easy Sunday, and we'll see you soon. All right, we're now on a third attempt on platform one. Brandon Taze going, oh my God, 147 misses, going up to 190. Wow. Oh what my gosh. That? How did he do that? What was that? That's what you see with the quip lifting, with that um, deadlift suit helping him. Oh. That's going to be no lift? No lift. Go he to the got... jury right now. I'm going to give you 20 bucks right now. Go, go, go. Ben Lazowski. Oh, that was an interesting call there. That was interesting. He still walks away your national champion in the 125 kilo equip division, no matter what, since he did get his opener on the board. And that was really smart there to have a opener that um, is easy enough that he could hit to secure that championship. All right, on to third attempt, platform one, Ben Lazowski. He's got to hit this 210 kilos and in order to post this total. And Evelyn on the platform two, well ahead in the 100 plus kilo division. Probably gonna be your national championship um, unless some sort of miracle happens, but she is trying to hit a 402 pound deadlift for her second attempt. And unfortunately, that's going to be a no lift for Ben Lazowski. He does, unfortunately, bomb out of the meet. He's not able to post a total. Now, he was already coming in here as a guest lifter, one of one. So at this point, he was really just kind of lifting for himself, which is all you should be doing. Here's Evelyn Edenburn. Easy second attempt there. Corbin. Really shutting the door for the other lifters to get that national championship spot. And we are now moving into third deadlift attempts over on platform two. We have Aubrey with a 117 and a half kilo deadlift attempt. Corbin unable to get 220, but able to stay, stay with his opening deadlift attempt of 200 kilos. He is sitting in third place. Yeah, and there's a bit of a spread there, so he's probably going to walk away with the bronze medal. Anthony missed this on his second attempt, looking to come back for redemption. He has posted a total, so he is going to be your national champion in the 140 plus kilo equipped division, no matter what, no matter if he makes this or not. But it's still good to end the day on a high note. Let's see if he can do it. Aubrey Lehman gonna start off our third at Samus Platform 2. 117 and a half kilos. Ooh, excellent work there for John. Is he able to find the lockout? Yes, he is. Kind of the same um, situation as his second. So fast off the floor, struggles with lockout. Two good to one, one. A good, good lift. lift. Great way to end the day. Here we have Garrett Cook coming up for 240 kilos. Riley Willie on platform two. Here's Riley Willie, platform two. Looking to retake 135 kilos. Can she find her way up? Yes, she can. I think that's gonna be a good lift. Oh, oh, it's not going no. to be. Two to one, no lift. They didn't think she had a sufficient lockout. They can go to the jury to try to protest that. Bars loaded for Weston Bono. Weston is in the silver medal position. Come on, this is 534 pounds for Weston Bono. Daytona. And unfortunately, just not coming off the ground. Daytona on platform two locks out 135 kilos. It's a good a lift. Beautiful three lift. Three. And that actually pulled her into, or excuse me, she was in third place. 
and that kept her positioning there. Emma getting set up with 137.5 kilos. Relatively a big jump on um, 12 and a half kilos. She missed her opener, got it on her second, avoided disaster, looking to end off the day strong. Oh, Benjamin, tough fight on platform one. Locks it out. That's a big deadlift, too. 270 kilos. Unfortunately, it's going to be a no lift for Benjamin. But he still walks away as your national champion in the 100 kilo equipped division. Oh, excuse me. Daniel Rodriguez. Here we have Daniel trying to pull it to first. Now, wait a minute, folks. Daniel taking a huge jump here, 20 kilos, to try to pull over Benjamin, who just missed on his third attempt and kind of swung the door open for Daniel. Wow. Battles all around at high school nationals. Two to one, Abigail Stefanski finishes a wonderful day, a beautiful embrace by her coach. We love the celebration, and we love to see the result of everyone's hard work. Here we have Daniel setting up for a gold medal position pull. Can he lock? Oh, and it's not quite there yet, but he still locks up and locks in that silver medal. All right, bars loaded for Rick Bowes. And you know what? Actually, he has not fully locked in that silver medal because Rick Bowes taking a huge jump here what? after missing his second attempt. 32 and a half kilos. Are you kidding me? Going to be trying to pull into silver over Daniel Rodriguez, who just took that big jump. So instead of defending his silver medal just extending his total by a um, relatively reasonable amount Daniel decided to go for gold and now his silver is being threatened by Rick Bose Rick Bose going up to 280 kilos 617 pounds this is a big ask for Rick So Rick, I believe initially he had in 284.5 um, to try to chip uh, some type of record, but at the this high school level national meet, you cannot um, chip records. You can break records, um, but there is no high school quote unquote division for records. So you cannot have any chips. Had to have a little miscommunication there, or had to get that sorted out on platform one. But Here's the bars loaded for Rick. And on platform two, Giselle, currently in fifth place, going to try to pull into the fourth place position. This is more than what she needs, but she's loading it up anyways. Here we go, Rick. With Rick. Pulling into silver. Big jump here. That might have been a little bit too ambitious there. However, Rick still manages to secure the bronze medal. And, and Benjamin is going to be your national champion in the 100 kilo division. Giselle, a pull into fourth place. More than what she needs, but it doesn't matter. Able to lock it out. Three white lights. And our last deadlift of session one, ladies and gentlemen, Caleb Bordelon, platform one, 282 and a half kilos, six hundred and twenty-two pounds. Huge deadlift here. Slower oh. up the, oh man, just lost it at the hands. Oh, you gotta hate when it loses on grip. It's one of the most frustrating things. However, Caleb is still your high school national champion in the 110 kilo equipped division. Yeah, he was well ahead the whole time. Ends off the day with a 760 kilo total. Here we have Alyssa with 175, taking a five kilo jump after missing her second attempt. And ladies and gents, that's gonna, whoa, here's Alyssa. Wow. Oh, unfortunately, no lift for Alyssa. Here we have our last deadlift of the session. We have Evelyn Edinburgh with a 190 kilo, 419 pound deadlift, who's already in first place in the 100, 100 plus kilo division. Just looking to extend that margin. Yeah, Evelyn is already your national champion. Like Nick said, just trying to extend her lead. 
trying to put the cherry on top of a phenomenal performance thus far. Only missing her squat opener, looking to really end off on a good note. Oh. Wow, what oh, wow. second gear. Able to grind I thought it she out. lost that there, locks it out. Now I'll tell you what, that is going to be up and downward motion almost certainly. And it is, unfortunately, with our judges. But you know what? What a phenomenal finish. What a presentation of heart that we're seeing on these platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap up our coverage of session one, day four of the 2024 USA Powerlifting High School National Championship here in Louisiana, Baton Rouge, to be exact. It's been an honor and a pleasure and a privilege to get to speak on the mic with you all and to be joined by two phenomenal co-hosts. My name has been Nick Stevens, AKA Gainendorf on the track. Joined by? Adriana Davis, gonna be back for session two, the last session of High School Nationals. And Kevin Serrano, AKA Kevin Swarano. I won't be here commentating next session. I'll be handling, so look out for my lifter, Jack Caden. We'll be looking out for him. Well, folks, it's been a blessing. It's lunchtime, go and get you some food. You've got about an hour-ish. Uh, plenty of time to get you some food. We'll be back at one o'clock.